Oh. <laughs> you got a friend in me. Oh, Ron. There's a still frame there where you We're see Mark to, to, your head. Head. Yeah. to the left. <laughs> You're trying to do it because I can't see my monitor from down there. I didn't know where to I didn't know when <laughs> Sam had gone live. Put all the lights in your head just right in the corner. Right in the corner there. <laughs> uh, how's it going, everyone? Welcome <laughs> to the most professional Dungeons and Dragons stream on the internet. That's gonna be our new tagline. I've decided. Yeah. Oh. The most professional Dungeons and Dragons stream on the internet. I mean, you do say it pretty much every week. Yeah. You say it a lot. Most professional Dungeons and Dragons stream that on the internet. True. Yeah. It's time for High Rollers Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> Hello, I'm your Dungeon Master, Mark Sherlock Humes. Join me this week. Hi. We have Jesus. Other side. Hi. We Hello. Adam, Hello. Chris Trot, Kim Richards. This is hurting my face. <laughs> Tom. <laughs> And Katie. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, everyone. <laughs> the Illuminati. No, do not start. Oh, I've had enough lizards. experience. The lizards experience. are in control. They are not. We do not endorse it. There are no lizards. Yeah, keep it quiet, Mark. You're part of them, aren't you? You're a lizard. <laughs> I knew he was a lizard. He's wearing He's contacts. Taking his flesh. <laughs> it was me. It was me all along. Me all along. Well, it is me. Is me doing some D and D? Okay, he's not lizard. <laughs> no, lizards are smarter than that. <laughs> what it is me? Welcome everybody. Uh, a couple of quick things uh, before we started. The first one, going to keep mentioning it because we still got stuff to sell. Freshstore.co. Go there. You can get the high rolls collection. You can get our glittery blessing dice. You can also get the core collection. Uh, you can check out a bunch of wonderful things. There might be some special things at some point in the future for certain things. You'll see more to come later. Katie's giving me a, a look, but I'm going to carry on. No, uh, I was just thinking that we actually have to decide a date for that, and we should oh, talk dear. about that. We should. What, uh, the... Today! Oh, no, it's not. Really. <laughs> oh, not today, but soon. Uh, Freshstore.co, yeah. High here. Rollers Collection. Pick up the stuff. It's a lovely gift for you. It's a lovely gift for us. Mm. Oh, you get a little, we get a little. Everyone gets a little something. Everybody it's wins! Lovely. Everybody wins. I bought the last hat. She yes. actually did. I, I actually bought the last hat. Why did... So. Oh. Okay. There's no more hats. There's no more hats. No, That's I, it. You I have to. The last one. You have to fight Kim <laughs> for that last hat. So you got the benefit of both sides of that deal. You got a little something, and you got a little something. Yeah. That's unbelievable. <laughs> unbelievable. Corruption in the system. Got a nice hat though. Lizard. Great. There was literally one left, and she sent a message to Georgie like, "I'm gonna buy a hat." Freshstore.co. <laughs> get your high rolls merch before Kim buys. <laughs> uh, <coughs> also, uh, just a very quick thing, just want to say thank you all very much for uh, last week's episode. We I, I went back, I was actually, I was like maybe peeping, peeping in on everybody. Um, it was a very good episode. I want to say a big well done to the team here, but also thank you everybody for being like just so into it and being like so enthused about it. It was really nice. It gave me like a big boost. Uh, so yeah, great stuff. He wanted to see your leaky eyes because he had the leaky eyes. eyes. Yeah. So yeah. It's a medical he, condition. Mm -hmm. He had to make sure that Don't make he fun of me for people. my medical condition. <laughs> no, I'm saying you had to make sure that people, you know, joined in your... There are many people. other people. There are hundreds of thousands of people out there. There are tens suffer. of us. There are tens of <laughs> us <laughs> <There are> tens <laughs> who <laughs> suffer from leaky eye syndrome every week. Uh, and they need to be heard along with me. Okay. All right? Sure. Anyway, with that, <laughs> yeah. we're going to play the Dun Duns, and then we're going to get into this new episode of High Rollers of Rois. Oh, woo. She gonna fuck you. <laughs> 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 
did it. Let's try it again. Let's try it again before it's got it in. But you broke yourself. <laughs> you didn't, I'm, no, I'm, I'm pretty I sure it's in. I'm pretty sure it's in. didn't get it in. It's 100% in. It, that, was all, that was all in there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to the last episode of High Rollers. Last time, our champions enjoyed a moment of peace, having defeated Callus Valkyrian, the Astral Emperor. They were rewarded with a moment to take stock, to speak with those important to them, to reaffirm, and in some cases, regain connections, to talk of trauma and mistakes of the past, lingering scars, to embrace new avenues, unexpected avenues of potential hope for the future, to reminisce on memories, to reconnect with home, and to forge new oaths. And that is where we pick up today with all of those things having happened. I don't want to go into the specifics because I feel I could not do them justice. It, it is not an episode to miss the previous one. No, no sorry. So, the time has come. <laughs> Siaska, the Star Mother, goddess of Erois, has been reborn, and with her awakening, the entropic being called Hadar is roused to press its attack and consume the last divine spark in the universe. So, are we all right? Okay. Yeah, we're good. Yeah, 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 we're good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah good. I made Tom laugh and I didn't expect Show me a really dumb picture of Angus. <laughs> good. Do you want to share with the class? Yeah. Yeah, that's what we're <laughs> I, I really that's love nice. it when when there's like right. laughing when I'm trying to do my serious recaps. For podcast <laughs> listeners, it's a funny picture of a cat, okay? <laughs> I'll tweet it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, having had the emotional experience of the last episode, of our last session, this time it's there is some numbers. There's much to be done. Uh, mm. With a few days past. At some point, um, and you guys can you guys can kind of tell me when this might be. I imagine this would probably be after the sort of meal on on uh, the Astoria where you were kind of gathered in Century Forged Earth. But how much longer after that? If you guys did bits and pieces before, in between. Um, but uh, Siaska, Callus, Valor would probably send you a message. In fact, I'll, I'll play it out. Siaska would message you. Uh, it would be in your minds telepathically. Champions, the time is approaching when we must leave Erois and travel to battle Hadar. There is much that Callus and I must discuss with you, our plan for the battle ahead. Gather the allies that you trust most, the allies that you would take with you into what may be your final battle. Bring them with you to a meeting to discuss this next step of our journey. I'm gonna make a list. Make a list. Who yeah. we're taking, who mm. we're not taking. Basically, I'm gonna make a maybe list, a definite list, and then we can... We can who is precious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so. Do, do we go with the, the strongest fighters? Well, or do we go with well, the sexiest? <laughs> Why not both? Um, good. The, the, I mean, the easy one um, on the top of the list is Thalia, Big Cat, and Kari, because they come in in the twin star. Yeah. Can't, literally can't stop her. Can't stop her. It's a bundle discount. Yeah. Thalia. So. It's a two for one. What, what I'm going to specify here, I'm not going to get too out of gamey meta with this, because you don't know what's going to happen. What I will say is we are going to make a blanket assumption that, like, Things like so generic soldiers and things like that. We'll have a discussion about who they are going to, what that's going to look like as well. What assets you're going to bring along with you. Things like the guardians, for example, they would be a generic asset, like a kind of like we're going to bring the guardians to be an army with us, right? Nice. What I'm looking at for these trusted NPCs 
is these are going to be like your Mass Effect companions, mm. your loyalty. Like these are the companions that might end up in a mission with you, in a battle with you. These are the companions that you might want to send off to do tasks or missions whilst you're out in space. I'm also going to make it very clear now, anybody you don't spe specify today isn't coming. Mm. You can't then, like, in two, three weeks' time, be like, oh, can we say that we have brought blah, blah, blah with us? Oh, fair enough. It's going to oh, be a, like, off. this is the, once you set off from Erois, once the Astoria leaves Erois, there is no bringing people along for the ride, cool. right? Just as a as a way yeah. to prevent sort of like, oh, let's bring, oh, we forgot about blah blah blah. Let's bring them <laughs> along and stuff like that. Like, yeah. you know, like this is this is your chance, and you can take you know take some time, talk about it now, figure it out in character. But just this is basically like assemble your Bioware RPG crew. We have to <laughs> have done the loyalty <clears throat> missions first. Well, I mean, <laughs> we've done them. <laughs> you've done, done them. Yeah, you've I'm you have. You tell me. You tell me whether you know. Okay. So Thalia and the twin Twinbo. So uh, Thalia, right. Big Cat, Kyrie, Max. To uh, to set the roleplay scene, where shall we be for this meeting? Yeah. It's I, great. I kind of want to be on the Storm Chaser. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Yeah. In uh, yeah. Lucius's captain yeah. quarters, maybe surrounding the big table that you've used in the past for yeah. meetings and such like. Yeah. So we can set that. It'll probably be uh, you know sort of mid morning. Um, you know, Howard would have brought like food and prepared everything to, you know, almost preparing for like a, a conference. Like this is probably going to be a couple of hours for you guys to sit there and figure this out. Um, uh, Grelano and the others are all kind of like making sure Kamara is making sure the ship is uh, the ship is being looked after. Uh, and you know, you know that Quill, you probably would have had plenty of sending spells. You've got plenty of sending spells to send messages to people and stuff like that, ready to go. Yeah. Um, don't worry about things like spell slots today. We can just assume that if you need to contact somebody, you have a magical means of doing that whatever that happens to be. Hey, so you want to come to space with us? <laughs> a big demon thing? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, and this would be also, uh, think about not necessarily who you want to take with you on this final arc, this final chapter of the story, but also who you want to take to actually meet with Kalos and Siaska to discuss the plan going forward as well. The Dragonborn. Yeah, I was going to say, they're probably a good idea to return to Spesh. Now, are there specific <laughs> dragons you want to take with you? The ones to meet Starbane. <laughs> be an interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, but yeah, is that like a specific, you know, dragon or dragonborn that you want to take with you, or is that something again where uh, they might be more like the guardians and be like a war asset uh, that we're gonna kind of take along? Maybe both, because we do have some named ones that we sure. can definitely remember off the top of our head. But also mm. the general, like that, they would be a good asset just as a, a unit. Sure. Yeah, you tell me. Yeah. I can't remember them off the Yeah, I'm yeah. trying to find the right page in my diary. <laughs> um, Project Now Bandit. that uh, Hope Hester has <laughs> realized her true potential and power, that makes her strong enough to join the fight, right? Certainly, I mean, Hope was basically an, is not quite a full arch fay, but is close to being one. Like, she's very powerful. And she's a powerful to druid. Huh? She's immune to her girl, being fay. Not necessarily. Let's bring her in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Hope is a you know that Hope is a powerful druid. Like she was, well, she has like druidic magic. She's not a full druid. She doesn't yeah, wild she, shape and stuff. Yeah, she was a vendor before this, and I has get, had little combat experience. She I made healing slabs. Yeah. I'll put her in the maybe pile just now. This is, I like the idea that Ayla is the one who's writing down the maybe pile. Like, Ayla's got, like, a piece of stone. <laughs> <laughs> like a caveman. <laughs> you can't read a thing. <laughs> Not one bit of it. Um, Norfear? Norfear yeah. is a good one. Do you want Norfear to go? She's very skilled. Specific, though. She's very She's more of a stealth, stealth. infiltration. Which, is she maybe you know. someone to use elsewhere then, or...? It doesn't necessarily mean that they will necessarily be in a D&D style combat encounter, but they may be available to like send on a mission or do some a task or something while you're out there. You don't know what you're going to really be facing again, so that's something to keep in mind. Um, I guess with the Astoria we can take everyone we know. If we want, much, if we want to. If, well, yeah, yeah. To you, a point. To a point. Do we want to leave Arvel behind, or do we want to take Arvel? I think Arvel should be left behind. I, he's not a battle boy. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. He's a money boy. As much as I want to have Arvel with us, I don't think he's the right call. Yes, Arvel, yeah, that's fair. Arvel is a stayer. Uh, going back to Hope, by the way, like there are certain characters like Hope when you were in the Feywild, 
she very like when she became this like unicorn centaur form, her power vastly increased. Like I'm happy to tell you, like you can say, is this character a com a, like you know got combat ability? Is this person like actually high level? Yeah. yeah. I will give you a vague <clears throat> yes or no. Arvel, for example, has almost no combat ability. He is a pretty much a civilian who tra he's a tradesman. Um, you know, he's very good with yeah. numbers and talking to people. <laughs> um, he but might yeah. be able to talk to Hadar. It could potentially <laughs> be. We don't need fighters, we need lovers. Uh, you also, I will also say that, you know, with Callus and Siaska on side, it's highly likely, and think people like Azaria Perel and like the whole of Aurora is kind of like backing this. Um, your things like NPCs, even if they're not like, you know, characters like Maximilian, you know, aren't anywhere really near your level of power. Mm -hmm. They can probably be given like magical items and like mm. enhancements and enchantments to like boost their power a little bit, right? So assume that anybody you decide to take will be about an equal power level. They won't be as powerful as you guys, but they will all be Better powerful be. and useful. No, exactly. <laughs> um, Are they in stormlighted? Kind of, yeah. They're kind of being bestowed with power, whether that's through magic items or divine blessings or enchantments. But they will be on a gameplay level equivalent to each other, but not as powerful as you guys. Sure. See, ask a So, <clears throat> for Dragonborn, I have Amadrasis, General Amalaz, and General Thamalas. They were the three that came to the big meeting. Oh, that's yeah. the one that that Yeah. <laughs> he made that up. <laughs> you know this is a fantasy. <laughs> no, I know, it's just when you say, say them all back to back like that, General Thamalam, yeah, I think they're worth taking. General I think so, yeah. Thamalami Ding Dong. Yeah, yeah. Are they valid? Anybody's valid. To... Anybody's valid. There were the, I think so. There they're were dragons. actual dragons that escorted us to uh, no, some here of, as well. Some of them were dragons and some of them were dragon born. So we actually, there's two categories here. How did the dragons, after fighting <clears throat> the titans, the, not the, oh, uh, yeah. the great the, beast, the, the great beast, yeah. yeah. How d did they recover, or yeah, yeah. no no casualties? There probably were some casualties, but nobody of uh, significance to who you know and things like that. Okay, but there would have been casualties for sure. Like there would definitely would have been some dragons and dragonborn who lost their lives, um, 100. percent I'll also inform the crew about my conversation with Sky Prince, mm -hmm. um, in that they mentioned the Wind Barons. And there might be others that have been taken in by Zarkira, so actual forces that we might need forces to fight against. Um, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So North so is valuable Dragonborn, and stuff like that, and Dragonborn. Having physical fighters might actually be really valuable. So for now, what I'm going to do is I've written down Thalia plus crew, like they kind of uh, Thalia is like going to be our focus, <coughs> and then Kyrie and Big Cat kind of uh, like sidekicks for Thalia. Yeah, Maximilian. I'm assuming you mentioned, and that seemed like a pretty reasonable one. Yep. He's going to be with Starbeam, right? And Starbeam's going to be there. Potentially. And Valor. But He'll be with Valor. Assuming that they're going to be available to you. a trusted NPC, yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, in terms of the Guardians, mm -hmm. Sentry, this is up to Sentry. Like, you know that there are many Guardians who aren't fighters and soldiers. You know that there are, like, that many of them are built for that purpose. Like, mm -hmm. and many of the ones that you rebirthed in the City of Glass, the ones that you gave new life, they were the Guardians who first fought Hadar long, long ago and have been mm -hmm. stored in the Matrix ever since. Yeah. So a lot of them are warriors and soldiers who know this fight very well. Cool. Um, if you have specific named Guardians, we can make them... Figure that we've got two columns here. We mm -hmm. have, like, NPCs and we have war assets. If you want to have specific Guardians for your NPC allies, like some of the guys that helped you fighting against um, the the knights, the the... Grief Knights, mm -hmm. um, you could maybe pull some of those guys out and have them as NPCs. Otherwise, I was going to count the Guardians as just a kind of army that cool. you have with you, right? Yeah. But that's up to you. Like, that's yeah. how I was seeing it in my head, but if you have a different theory, let me know. No, no, it sounds good. Yeah, to have like a whole group of Guardians and one or two that as like a chain of command kind of thing. Yeah, sure. Yeah, and like this, it wouldn't be taking every single guardian on a row. This no. would just this would be taking probably a good majority of them. But like you would leave most of the ones who are like artists and you know laborers and stuff like yeah. that, you know, back here. And um, this would be taking all the soldiers. But it's enough to count as an army, nice. guardian <laughs> army, basically. <laughs> um, so if you have any specific ones, let me know. Otherwise, I wrap them up into the war assets, right? Uh, 
for example, and then uh, say for like the dragons and Dragonborn, right? The same thing there. If you have specific ones that you want to have as like actual characters that will interact with you and go along with you, they would need to be named NPCs. Otherwise, dragon slash Dragonborn will just be another sort of similar to the Guardian Army. They will be a force that you can use. Um, I think they. So I'm going to put them down army. as a, a, a war asset for now. But you tell me if they're specific. I think they could stay like that, right? Um, Unless there's anyone that there's like Hotshot yeah. and um, Rook. I don't know. If they're... Oh, oh I meant the dragons. Oh, sorry, dragons. Um, yeah. But also, dragons. yeah, Hotshot is Hotshot is dead. And yep. Rook's yeah, he is in the Matrix. Herald. Herald's also in the Herald's Matrix. Herald's gone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we've got Scout. Lookout. Lookout. Could be good. I mean, part of the storm Protector. chaser. Protector. Yeah. Protector survived. Yeah. So could we do Protector and Scout? I think would be a good combo. Mm hmm. Yeah. Protector recovered as well into the matrix. Yes. Yeah. No, Protector no, survived. survived. Protector was the one that you thought was dead, and then when you went back into the forest to find them, they had managed to survive. They were the ones that lured all the undead away, and you yeah. thought had died, <clears throat> but they had survived. Okay. Oh, I yes. thought we'd found them, and they were very, very worse for wear. So they, they, I mean, they yeah, were, yeah, they were, but they, they, they would be more able to recover than others. Yeah. Okay. Even if they went into the Matrix, like Sentry can uh, reassign them to another Guardian if need be. Yeah. Um, Rook and Herald were a lot worse off, so they yeah. need more time. But Protector could be called out. Okay. Sentry, quickie. Mm -hmm. You know when you bring uh, Guardians out of your Matrix yeah. and you put them in a Guardian that's already, which has lost its, its, its Matrix, have you? Was there ever a time when guardians made new bodies, to so put old matrices into, like enhanced new bodies? That's what Solven was doing. Yeah. It's like Solven did like worked with Root to create new bodies and new, and new matrices, yeah. um, but that technology was lost with Solven. Um, and there would have been a time, you know, Root would probably tell you this in the in the Matrix, but yeah, there was a time like and the height of the guardians sort of civilization and culture, where they they were a race, they were a, a people out in astral space. They built worlds and and they built bodies and, but they don't. There's no you know they don't, they don't reproduce like an organic being. No. They sort of grow new bodies. Like back in probably in Roots Day, they would have grown bodies like from wood and plants and then affixed stone and metal and wood and things like that. Whereas with Solving, it was more constructed, so they're more like armor and like metal. They're more metallic. But yeah, like hundred percent. But that that's lost lost knowledge now, sadly. Yeah. Just thought maybe some enhancements for the Guardian race that we could. We could always get armor for them and give them weapons and. We have the Astoria with the the gem ladies. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we could help forge some weapons and armor for them. Yeah, we have access to that sort of thing. I was wondering if there's any that could do with the a sprucing, so to speak. We'll have a look and see who who needs it, I suppose. Just I'm sure thought. Azaria would love to do something like that. Yeah. She always looks at Sentry funny, you know, like she wants to... Yeah, she's been meaning to yeah. study you for a while, but I'm sure you already know that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Just a bit on the fence about it. Yeah. I think, stay this side of the fence. The do not let her do that side of the fence. But, speaking of, she definitely brings Zarya with us. She's fought Zarkira before, question mark? Yeah, she has. Yep. We watched her do it. We didn't know which way it was going to go. She's a very powerful mage. It and she has sense. an understanding of Magitek now as well. She's been sort of understanding Solvin and Valkyrian technology. Yep, and she's already sided with us once before. That seemed permanent. At least, if I was Valkyrie, it would be permanent. Until she has a better offer. Well, her flavor of creepy is very different from Hadar corruption creepy. It's kind of, she's willing to pick things apart to see how things work and seeking knowledge rather than unraveling for unraveling's sake. Yeah. That reminds me, We've did you put a skull in my room? What? Someone, <laughs> someone put a screaming skull in my room and I'm trying to figure out who Oh, it was. one of one of Azaria's yeah. like, creepy skull. Oh no. Well, it definitely wasn't Ayla. <laughs> that passive insight doing some work over there. <laughs> passive insight of 22. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> um, yeah, so Azaria could join us. Um, just going back to the <clears throat> dragons, 
there was Commander General Velavixus, who was the gold dragon that was asleep. Like, he was a big sleepy boy. Sleepy boy, And he woke yep. up and yep, he yep, went yep. to sleep. But I've got here written down that the older dragons became sleepy and fatigued because of the cradle. Now that the cradle's gone, are all the old dragons who live in um, the Vex area, have they woken Ooh. up? It's a great question. It's only been a few days. Not something you've investigated, but Ooh. if you want to. Can we investigate Yeah, can we do that? Sure. Yeah, after we have this discussion. Although they didn't, they don't really like us that much. They don't like Hadar. Yeah, but we yeah. did lock that little dude in a cupboard. I'm I sure think we could right. assign them to lead their own yeah, dragonborn forces. army, rather than have any yeah. specific people mm. on the story of the well, yeah. in our group. Sure. I mean, perhaps we um, liaise with Amadrasus, mm -hmm. just so we're all on the same page. Yes. But I think they're very much. Military, structured, they know what they need to know. There's a target, go. Yeah, would be good to, to be reckoned with. Yeah, a dragon force. And they can fight alongside your Andreas. Every yeah. dragon. Oh, your Andreas. Andreas is gone. Is he though? He vanished. Isn't you s call him back? <laughs> I don't want, no. <laughs> Why? Uh, we'll see. Dragon. It'd be, it could be useful. It could be useful. If it works. Well, we can investigate when we investigate dragons. Yeah. We'll see. Now's what? the time to ask. So right now, in terms of NPCs, Thalia, Maximilian, Protector and Scout, to sort of be sort of commanders, but to be active NPCs to join you. Maybe Azaria? Is that a yes, no on Azaria? Can I get yes? a... I think so, yeah. Yes. I think she's a yes. <coughs> she's the... She's on Astoria. What about Norfear? There was a sort of like, do you want to, maybe, but wasn't sure. I think it's Lucius's call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, well, I, I'm more interested to see if Norfear wants to. Any NPC that you have significant connections with will come along if you ask them to. <laughs> there is not, there is not going to be really a discussion. You guys are the champions of Aroes. If you tell people you need them to come, they come. It's not really a, they have a choice in the matter. Mm. It'd be useful to have <clears throat> a stealthy, silent, sneak round, stab him in the back. She was a very talented spy and assassin. Oh, she slit Hadar's throat from behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, sure. North here. Okay. On the list. All right. Um, we don't need Moonstar, because I'm Moonstar now. Not like Rain and Danica. I am the knight. Oh, yeah, I yes. guess, yeah, Danica yeah, should be a... A go-to. Danica? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Rain, I will say, uh, is not... In a, in a similar sense to Arvel, they are a combatant in, like, a sense of, like, they're maybe, like, a second-level fighter. Right. <laughs> like, uh, right. there's no amount of powering up that's going to enable Rain to be, like, a strong combat. However, they could be a war asset because you yeah. will need a command crew. You still don't have a command crew for the Astoria still. That's what I was thinking. So yeah. having yeah. that would, like, you could assign Rain to be part of that command crew and then mm -hmm. that will be an effective... That will affect how well the Astoria is, how useful the Astoria is yeah. in a mm. conflict. I think we offered it to him before, but yeah, we did. in the state of Aroes at the time, mm -hmm. he had to refuse, but yeah. this yeah. time might be more. All yeah. right, I will put Rain down um, as command. I was going to ask, well, originally I was going to ask the new Tiangong if they, or Antasadar, if they could ask any Eterna that they knew mm -hmm. if they could help with the Astoria, like power it, run it. <clears throat> um, so I don't know, A, if there are any Eterna, and B, if they would want to join the Astoria. You would feel, you'd hear a voice. All of you would hear a voice, kind of going back to something that has been missing for a little bit of time. Uh, it is entirely possible the Eterna will fight alongside both Valkyrie and Anoroas against Hadar. Individually, the Eterna will not be as strong allies as we or Tassadar are, and the other member of the Triumvirate is more of a healer and protector. But there will be a force of Eterna at your command if you request it. This would take the form of another war asset. You would have basically the Eterna as another sort of unit or army to, to utilize. Well, shit. Um, Did you all hear that? Yeah, yeah. No, I heard yeah. that, yeah. So that's back. Yeah. That's amazing. I am indeed returned, or we, sorry, we have joined with Nova Vija, but it is important that you understand we are not the Tiangong you knew before. 
Well, how does that work? So when Tian Gong went, mm -hmm. plunged into the very painful moment, yes, bought and saw mm -hmm. to save, leaving a big empty hole in my heart. Yeah. Yes, the so triumvirate and Eterna, they can't truly the energy is just transferred. No, that Tian Gong was destroyed. Right. Nova Vija's memories. That connection Nova Vija had to that version of Tiangong has been merged with the Tiangong that had bonded with Callus Valkyrian. Through those memories, parts of us have been recreated and forged new ideas, new beliefs. The physicality is provided by the Tiangong shards that Callus Starbane collected. Yes. And I guess I provided the other half my with my memories of of my Tiangong. Nova uh, Vija's bond to the Tiangong you once knew is very strong. Magically, it left an echo. And through that echo, we were able to recreate a part of that Tiangong. But when the two forms merged, something new was created. Perhaps in a simple way to explain it, it is similar to a metal alloy. Two individual metals, when merged together, become something stronger, something new, with different properties. Wow. That was very insightful, thank you. You are welcome, Lucius. I didn't get a word of what he just said. Um, yeah, okay, so there's no hope for Night Frost then. Sadly, no, there was nothing left. It is possible. Eterna, Night Frost's energy would not be destroyed, but the form you knew would be gone. Very that well. energy cannot be recreated into a new form. Well, scientists would disagree, but yes. Lucius doesn't say that <laughs> at all. Also, magic. Magic. <laughs> magic. All right, so the triumvirate and, and the Eterna are, yeah. are on our side. Fantastic. We will be with Nova Vija. We will provide the same benefit that we have before, but we will be present. The we being Tiangong. Tiangong and the Eterna. There will be numerous Eterna that will join us warriors, I suppose. But under yours and Nova's command? They will they will function as their own right. entity. But consider me a part of Nova Vija now. Okay. Consider us part of Nova Vija now. Tassadar is another matter. You would need to inquire with Tassadar themselves if they wish to aid you in some manner. That's they have always been very independent. Well, right here, so. Are they not linked to um, Callus' ship? They are. But they are able to manifest themselves in many places. Yeah, I remember they went on a bit of a holiday in Eroes. Mm -hmm. Have you? No. <laughs> it's gonna be like, has Tian Gong ever been on holiday? No. Um, About to, to astral space. So Tassadar is, Tassadar is a possible. Mm -hmm. um, yep, they would be powerful. Yeah. yeah, it would be a fragment of Tastar, so not like an incredibly powerful, they would, again, be a very similar nature to everyone else, mm -hmm. um, but they would be a fragment of them. Uh, they are very, very knowledgeable about magical and magitech. Will, will they... And they have the benefits of being sort of not a real person, so they can sort of be destroyed and it doesn't kill off Tassadar completely. Okay. Um, but that might also mean that there are limitations to what they can and can't yeah. do. Uh, think of them as like a magical projection of Tassadar. Gotcha. Mm, okay. uh, would you like me to put Tassel on him? Yeah, I think that would be... Um, I don't see why not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, what about Rethra? Um, Rethra, Hunter of Vanya, and the Wild Elves. Yeah. So Wild Elves will be like a asset mm -hmm. unit, and then Rethra, Rethra and um, Vanya on the... Big Jack? You want big? You leave that sweet boy. No, I just want I him feel to like to his warren. <laughs> I'm going to say on this, just so I can simplify a bit for myself. Varnia will still come with you. Varnia will act as a commander for the war asset because sure. he's not as powerful. Rethra will be Kay. an NPC for you guys to use, if that's cool. Yep. Just because then I don't have too many 
yeah. things to do. And also, I think it makes sense that Vanya would be more like a, a like a squad leader for the yeah, Wild yeah. Elves. Um, yeah. There'll be a smaller war asset. There's not too many of them. Like they're kind of spread no. out. But the ones that you fought the great beasts with will 100% come along. Nice. And there'll be like a commando unit, basically good at sneaking, good at like taking out, you know, maybe um, sneaking around and taking out, you know, targets and things like that. But not like an army like the Guardians. Very cool. Hmm. I'll um, give them, like, some keywords so you know, like, oh, they're good at this, they're good at that. Nice. You know, so you can kind of think about how best to use them when the moment occurs. I'm going to try and, I'm gonna try and make it not too mechanical yeah. and complicated. I'm going to try and keep it kind of simple. Uh, I am not going to ask Tornado or the Seekers. I think they're far better suited to what is going on in Vortensar mm -hmm. and um, on the Rose. Okie dokie. I also don't feel like there's a group in Vortensar that really could help you know, in terms of, you know, maybe like... It would be the Seekers if there was one. Yeah, and I feel like they're probably more valuable staying... Nova's cool. ...in the Horn Saw. Um, I don't know, what do you guys think? I agree. Like, so you know what we use the Seekers for, the kind of, like, espionage and... Yeah, like, I mean, I think if we brought them, then Norfear would be their commander, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, probably Tornado would be. North is, okay. North was helping them, but like North is an, a sky like an, uh, an elf, like she's. Yeah. I think we need to worry about Eros as well, and what yeah. we're leaving behind, yeah. and what we're coming back to. There is a lot of unrest in Vortensar, a lot of problems that need rebuilding and healing, and I think the Seekers would do best. And I feel like if we were to remove all the Seekers and be like, "Hey, you're going to come into Astral Straits, possibly near to our home, where we tried to stop you from going to," it it's not, not a good look. Yes. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think Tornado would be better, and the Seekers would be better off staying on Aroes, and also, therefore, if I die, there's still a piece of it. You trailed off, but I heard everything. I think we should bring <laughs> along the Harvest Guard from Rose Hall. <laughs> <laughs> now, now we're talking. We Rosalina. do need a meat shield, yes. <laughs> They're a vibrant, enriched city now. You want me to write it down? Yeah, major NPC, Rosalina. <laughs> Of the Harvest Guard, well, she's. I, 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 unless you Don't tell me right now. No, are you joking? Yeah, of course it's okay. me. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, like you tell me something like write that down. I'm gonna write them down. Yeah. Okay. Jokes aside, I will be like, okay. Who sure. else have we got? Erin. Coral song? Coral song, oh, yeah, the Tritons. I had to think then. I was right. like, who? Oh. <laughs> Karen, no, I, know. I was trying to think of the people who fought the beasts yeah. as well. No, 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 they yeah. were on a force no. of the beasts. So they were. In terms of them in astral space. Yeah, I'm not sure. Do we need like, swimming. like a fishbowl yeah. <laughs> in the Astoria? Like astronaut helmets, but they're the <laughs> do walk on. I mean, well, I mean, yeah, as, do, you know that astral do. space, like, you can't just go out and fight in astral space. Like, the, sto like storm. the storm chaser in the story are Everyone protected by, like, these magical fields. So, like, you can stand on the deck of the storm chase, you can stand on the deck oh, of yeah. the story, yeah. and you're fine. But if you get separated from that, if you get pulled out of the protective barrier, you are going to be, like, taking a lot of cold damage and suffocating because mm -hmm. it is basically okay. outer space, okay. vacuum of space. Um, there's, a, there's a grace area. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think perhaps the Tritons are best off defending Aroas. Yes. Um, what of Starbane's forces? Do we have to worry about them in terms of coordinating them? You don't have to worry about them. Okay. No. okay. Yeah, they will be present. Uh, and for the sake of, because they've been like not part of the narrative, you don't know those forces, they will be basically doing like the grunt work of like you'll be able to focus on specific things because they'll be like fighting the millions and millions of Hadar minions that are going to be present. They'll be taking care of that so you can be like, fight that special enemy, do this special mission. They're going to be like the background the force. The big cutscene in the background. They're the big fight in the background, yeah, basically. Gotcha. Cool. What about your boyfriend? Oh, Sky Prince, I think, um, should remain leader of Gusthaven. I agree, I just wanted to say boyfriend. Just friend. removing the, um, I ignore that, uh, the monarchy. Yeah, how'd that happen? What? Tell us all about it. There is no time. We are facing the end times. Time stop. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone freezes except Quill. Oh. Um, well. <laughs> Sky Prince Aradan. Uh, emotions aside, very similar to the Seekers in Vortensar, I think there would be unrest in Gusthaven without a ruler seated. Um, it would be unwise. Also, 
No offense to him, I don't know what his combat capabilities are. He seems. He he would be. Uh, I would. Uh, he would be a suitable combatant if if you wanted to take him. But you can also choose to leave him behind. Hmm. What does anyone else think? It makes sense to leave. I mean, if, if we're hoping Danica would join us, uh, we <laughs> need some leaders back in a row. As it makes sense. Agreed. Um, Trying to think of else now. Um, Did you make a decision on hope? Yeah, I'm. 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 I'm for it. I'm nervous about it. I'm a little nervous yeah. about hope. But she's powerful. Yeah. She's powerful, but she's not battle. She's not mm. experienced combat. But she's been. She's. Been enhanced Powered up. since the Fae. Since and we saw it. Again, it might not always be combat that you need these allies for. It might be other tasks, other things that they can do that can help. Emergency slab. Faying up the place. Yeah, she does. She has <clears throat> magic now. I mean, she was the one that basically gated her and Mesmeri here. Mm. So, does she have any control or command of any Fae wild forces? Mm. Yeah, she could. The Radicans. Yeah. Uh, it would be the the. What was that place that you went to? The Feywild? <laughs> yeah, but there was the where Heart Mesmer's Spire. tower was Heartspire. Heart Spire. It'd be the forces of Heartspire. Thank you, Ray. <laughs> My brain was like. Is it, is it so an army like, of dandelions, though? Arm Armador would be amongst <gasps> their number. Uh, but yeah, yeah. It, would, it, would probably be, it would probably be led by the Rose Knight. Uh, uh, like, they're, they're sort of like, yeah, it would be a Very Feywild cool. force of, of, you know, magical soldiers, basically. Okay. Uh, plants, animals, satyrs, like Fey beings, like Fey creatures, which they will have. You know, unique traits mm. because they're Fey. Hmm. <laughs> Army of Fey. Do we want to take Hope and Mesmera? Mesmera take... would have to stay behind. Yeah. Uh, she's tied directly to the Fey world. She can't okay. leave it. She can leave it temporarily, but not to go out to astral space. So... She can come to a dinner. Yeah. yeah. Not to battle at the end of the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I'm dying. But yeah, I, I think Hope makes sense alongside some uh, of the. Rose Knights, was it? Sorry. Yeah, the Rose yeah. Knights of um, Heartspire. Heartspire Knights, we'll call them. Having an eclectic mix of different uh, races and planar entities would suit us, I think. Would benefit Grasped. us. I was wondering. I, I think was, he might be pissed at us. Yes. He's probably on the other side. We literally escaped a deal gone wrong. Or a gamble gone. Let's make another deal. Yeah, but we did beat the shit. We out did of kick it. his ass. Yeah. 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 Let's yeah. Make a deal. Let's make another deal. Who else do we have? Gold sword, the great worm, wolf pack. I mean, I Except feel like storm, storm chasers storm are coming. guaranteed coming with you. There's no escaping that. Those officers and the wolf pack are coming with you. Even that one wolf. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, he's oh, yeah. That especially one. that one. They are, they are dog. your Normandy crew. <laughs> Just like they the dust settles, everyone is standing victorious, and then <laughs> I get <laughs> <laughs> I do have actually an interesting question. Uh, going back to the concept of the Astoria and its command crew, Araya currently is the first mate and the pilot of the Storm Chaser, mm. but Lucius is capable of flying the Storm Chaser. Ooh. Would you want Araya to basically be the pilot on the Astoria because they need? More command crew, or do you want to keep it like now? Araya is a much better pilot than than Lucius, unfortunately. Well, also, still be able to pilot when Lucius is not exactly. Yeah, true. But you do need to think about again that command crew for the Astoria. Yeah. You yeah. currently have Rain as like Rain is probably going to oversee it as like the sort of CEO, like the like the over overarching officer of like making sure everything gets done. But you will probably need a pilot. You will probably need um, like a. Probably like a communications person to like help coordinate communications. Um, kind of want to ask Thalia to pilot, but I know that she'd love her twin star. She that would also remove her from being an NPC yeah. for you guys. Yeah. Also, it would remove the twin star. Yeah, and I feel like that'd be an asset. We should uh, just if, if we're going right past, let's just pick up Palador. Palador cannot leave a rose because he's the sunship needs to stay here. Some to... of his little Modron army. He, you, you could ask for a Modron from Palador. Yeah, absolutely. Could you take an entire ship? And born to pilot the Astoria? You absolutely could, yeah. yeah. I, I'm not if you don't have anybody specific in mind, there will be people that will take that role. Mm -hmm. That may have, like, they may not be as good. I'm thinking the Astoria is, like, the biggest yeah. 
asset. Mm-hmm. It's a very powerful weapon you have, yes. So we should put someone we trust implicitly yeah. with it. And also our communication with them second to none. Yeah. And Araya Danica? is that one to me. Because oh. I think with, yeah. with regards to the Storm Chaser, we're going towards Hadel. And then when we stop sailing the Storm Chaser, we are fighting Hadar. So we don't really need a captain. Well, we don't know. That's where at our destination. Um, in the terms of the chain of command, if Lucius, if Araya was on the Astoria and Lucius left the Storm Chaser, I think Kamara would basically be the next in line and she would take on the, she would basically become the pilot. So, so it's not Kamara. like it just drifts into. No, no, of course not. Yeah, somebody would. Okay. It would probably. It would either be like Kamara would take command, but she would probably have Lancian become the pilot because Lancian's a bit better of a pilot than her. He's okay. not as good as Lucius or Araya, though. But he'd be the next sort of like to take the helm. He's the next helmsman. Yeah, I mean, if Araya's capable of the massive upgrade from Storm Chaser. To... Well, I mean, like, I mean, Ryu, you, you created Araya, but she was a captain of an orc ship before yeah. the Storm Chaser. Um, she had a crew. She's, like, been a leader for most of her life, right? Like, she's been a pirate captain kind of thing. So, honestly, the Astoria is just bigger ship. Um, but it would probably add a bit more of a, a bit more of a mercenary flair to it. It wouldn't be a military vessel. It would be like a, a free captain, mm. you know, taking command and being like, yeah, fuck the rules, I'm going to do what I want. Um, so it might not necessarily mean that she plays well with, like, Valkyrian and, you know, the dragons, because she'll be like, I'm going to do my own thing. But that could be a good thing. That sounds like well, a know, good you, thing. Yeah, you don't know. <laughs> there's there's lots of ways it could all go. Um, yeah. So it's up to you guys. Uh, yeah, I mean... I, I, I'm not saying like, anything to be like, yeah. you should do this, by the way. I'm just saying these are options. Maybe one you've not thought of. This well, my worry was consider. if Araya's not there and Lucius isn't on the ship, then the storm chase is just gonzo, basically. But if, it's, if that's not the case, then it makes sense for Araya to be on the Astoria mm-hmm. um, alongside Rain. Um, I was thinking of maybe, like, I guess it's just come down to the only connection we really have with the Messenger Guild is Quill backstory. Beyond that, we haven't really done a huge amount with them. Um, so I don't know how much of an assistance they would necessarily give, but it could be useful could maybe to have a small regiment of just communications. Yeah, and... could they help with comms? Yeah. You can certainly, yeah, I can put them down. Um, the other thing I'm going to say, because I, you know, something I want to pick up on you said there, there, Tom, I will make it clear. Araya is the best pilot for the Storm Chaser. Lucius is a pretty good pilot. Lantian is next in line. The Storm Chaser might not just be useless, that doesn't mean there won't be risks. If you don't have the best people in the best places, the risks increase. Now that means that it will be random. There will be dice rolls and stuff involved. You guys might not even be the ones making them. But I'm going to say this now. Don't just think, oh, it's fine. Like, we can just have somebody else take it. That means the risk increases. Yes. Mm-hmm. And that goes for everything. Yeah. Like, the same with all these NPCs you're going to take. Same with all these war assets. You need to think about who do you trust, who's capable, who do you think is going to do best at that job. And that, that's not just a decision now. You're going to be making decisions in this final, you know, this assault on the Far Realm. That is going to be a constant thing where you're going to have to make decisions based on the tools and people you have around you. And there will be risks, mm-hmm. not just to you guys, but to the people that you take along with you as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I want to make that clear. What if we went and organized by job role and then just said who's the best in all of our rows at that one thing? Yeah, you could do that. Just keep in mind that if you don't have a personal connection to those people, yeah. then they may break. Their morale might won't be yeah. very strong because they don't know you. They don't trust you. But you could put somebody who isn't maybe the best at that thing, but is kind of okay at it, but implicitly trusts and like owes you their life, and they may actually be better at it because of that. Yeah. And again... You don't know what's the what the challenges you're going to have to face are. So just something to think about. It's not just who's necessarily the best. It's not just necessarily who's powerful. It's also a part down to how well they trust you and how well you trust them. Mm. I think Araya is the right choice for the Astoria. Because, Danica, maybe? Hmm, Danica, I think, moves Horizon with her magic. Yes. So I don't know yeah. if she's a good pilot for the Astoria. She's a good leader, though. She's a good leader. Yeah. Again, yeah, she absolutely would be. It would be. It would remove her as an NPC that can join you in battle. 
or on tasks and stuff like that. She would basically be taken out of the NPC pool and put into the war asset pool. I think that, that, that makes sense, to be honest. As like a commander of the Astoria, I suppose. Um, but also a very powerful fighter. Powered an entire city. Okay. The decisions. Hmm. Depends if we want to secure two very good captains on our two most important vessels. vessels. Or if we want to... I also say, if you want to come back to this decision just before we finish the episode, we absolutely can. You can move on, discuss a few things. Also, when you feel like you've got enough people, let me know, and we can literally have you guys meet up with Tiasco and Callus as well. Yep. Don't feel like you... like As long as I know before this session ends, we're good, but it doesn't have to be right this second. Sure, yeah. Um... Who else do we know? Is there anyone we're missing that's integral? I, I was wondering, probably not integral, but there's the Grand Strategist um, mm -hmm. who we rescued. Um, he might be useful in terms of, you know, consulting the Grand Strategy. Yeah. Um, a, a, a Grand Strategist as a war asset yeah. would probably be a good idea, yeah, for sure. What about that tiny mage cobalt? Vezik? Uh, yeah, Vezik. I, who, I was... um, who's this? Vezik. Vezik. Oh, you have to meet Vesic. Yeah. Um, I've, not, I've, not, I've not met Vesic. You have. Might he was on the ship when we rescued um, Quill. Quill. Yeah. I don't I'm trying know, to remember I if I think maybe think... you weren't there, but Sentry was. Right, okay. I think yeah. it might be one of those situations. Was, yeah, 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 it was a little cobbled that had control of gravity, but beyond Tiny. that, we haven't spoken to them again. Definitely some kind of worshiper of valor. Bit chaotic. Yeah, we don't really trust him. <laughs> I mean, he's literally disappeared. Because I, I was looking at like Rana as well. So like, remember when we had Celestials and stuff like that? You should bring Simsam. <laughs> Who? Simsam. The con man. Simsam Simbalor. He's gone. The dream. Okay. <laughs> he's gone. Fake. The, 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 lie, the lie that Quill keeps telling everyone. Um, tender. Yeah. A minor illusion. Oh, did you say the the Celestia? The Celestia. There was Rana, who we rescued from yeah. the ship. Um, but the ones we met. They and then the us. ones that we met that well, they didn't betray us. They just wussied out. Yeah. Um, but I don't mm. think they probably want to work directly with Stormbane. <laughs> I don't feel like they're very trustworthy. They're a bit they flaky, bailed they? on us when we were relying. They have on their them. best interests in mind, right? Yeah. So. And they've already proven that by abandoning us for death. Did you ever send them a message again? You said you were going to send them a follow-up message. It involved Me? a hand gesture, yeah. A very rude hand gesture. I can't send it, though, yeah. unless I see them. If I see them, I'll be sure to give them a message. Okay. Can't really do much hand gestures through messages. Yeah, Quill we said that he couldn't. Could you draw it? And draw like, it. Can... And then look at it, and then... If we meet them, I can, yeah, use telephone. I guess we're there, though. I can yeah. Just do that. Hmm. So, uh, so that's, is that a no to them? I think it's a no. I to... don't even know how to contact them, to be honest. Oh, I the wings of Ishtar. The wings of Ishtar. Mm. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I, I could contact them, but again, can't attach hand gestures. Also, I don't think it would be a good move to say like, "Hey, you bailed on us." Now you owe us. Now you owe us. Yeah. By the way, here's Starbane. Also, we're working with Starbane. Yeah, they were a resistance force on Gideon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, good but... handshake, though. Hadar, bigger problem. Mm -hmm. There's those drow on Graz's planet. <laughs> We're really scraping the barrel here. I mean, like, if you feel like you're done, if you feel like there's nobody that really springs to mind or well, any sort of assets like that you feel like... there is people that we've forgotten. I mean, there probably is, but... It's only 182 episodes. Yeah. yeah. Think yeah. through. Well, I mean, we I'm trying to go through different have, places in my head. We don't have, like, a cleric sort of healer force. Um, there was the... Scaldi. Scaldi. Oh, Scaldi. I don't and... know how she is since yeah. the power has been drawn away from her. You've not checked Waning. in, but yeah, you could always, you could check in. Like, if you want to, like, say now, like, that you kind of be like, hey, like, after the, like, let's go and see how she is and stuff like that. We could do that. There's also um, Starcaller Navarine, the representative of Siaska, um, who was at the world meeting and... <laughs> Just watching Trot's face. You were I mean, like, Star called Nevery, and Trot just went, but it's like his brain just. <laughs> I feel like if we're, if we're bringing up names of people that we've literally spoken to once. Yeah, but if they were at an Twice. important meet, World Council meeting. She helped then... us bring you back. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 
And, um... What, what about, what about Perry? Perry? What about... Oh, my Perry. God, what about Perry? Again, I haven't met him. Does everyone remember the group hallucination that was Perry? <laughs> he was real. He's just dead. Was he? Yeah. He's just dead now. Is he dead? Yeah. How did he die? He I, I couldn't message him if I tried. I have never met him. <laughs> I don't have any connection to him at all. What about the statue in the Underdark oh, of, the <laughs> of Life Force? Oh, what about Girly? <laughs> Fucking asshole. <laughs> what about Girly? Nobody who's watched it right people are like, who? What? What are they talking about? That was they like 20 know. million years ago. They know. <laughs> no. Um. Okay. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, let me let me read out who you have. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thalia, Maximilian, Protector and Scout. These are NPCs. These are your NPCs. This is your, your named loyal crew companions. Your Baldur's Gate Bioware companions. Sure. Thalia, Maximilian, Protector and Scout, Azaria, Norfear, Danica, Tassadar, Rethra, Hope. Also does show my slight bias for female NPCs. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just realizing now. Uh, uh, okay. and then on the war assets, you currently have the Guardian Army, uh, the Dragons and the Dragonborn, uh, Rain, Commander Rain as part of a command crew, the Eterna, Wild Elves uh, with Hunter Vanya, um, and then the Heartspire Knights from the Feywild. And the Grand Strat, do we want the Grand Strat just in If you want me to, I can add yep. them on. Yeah, it makes sense. Yep. I will add them to the command crew. Firmly yeah. on our side, I think, after we convince Basically. Them. Just chuck everyone on the list. <laughs> Why I mean, not? I, I found even more names here. Do you remember when it was five weeks to the leader meeting and Tom decided he wanted to role play sending 15 people messages? Oh, I drunk. Yeah, I've got all their names here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Who, who did I message? Uh, Arvel, Sky Prince Aradan, Malika Dawnblast, Norfear, Joanne Shallowstride, Drexia, Johan, Missy Steel Eye, Sana, Scaldi, Custodian Amadrasus, Dean Alessandro Vastra, Adea Elenasto, and Dean Simmons. Why did I message half of these people? <laughs> Dean Mark's Simmons. Mark's face I actually, was just no, like, no, I, I remember what? Most, I remember yeah, most yeah. of those. The only one I don't remember is Shallowstride, but I think they were part of the half orcs, like the pirate half orcs. Yes, like it the, sounds like a the, half orc. Yeah, Shallowstride. Yeah. Um, Missy Steel <laughs> It's from Callie's Rest, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, oh, yeah, she's yeah. the one who told us off. Um, and yeah, oh, she, she was she pissed at yeah. us. Yeah, Dean Simmons is the librarian who had mm -hmm. his tower burnt down. What about the... the um, There's the vampire the person oh, that yeah. Helios was protecting. That yeah, was... Um, um, come on. That wasn't Azaria, was it? No, no it, wasn't. it wasn't Azaria. No, it was a vampire lady. It was one of the yeah. first vampire. people I talked to But they were both about. on Gusthaven, weren't they? Yeah. In Gust uh, no, they were Kelly's Rest. Mm -hmm. um, Dean Alessandra Vastra. Mm. Oh, no, I believe, yeah, she was. She they were might have been in Gust Haven, yeah. But yeah, the I other think... Dean was in Kelly's Rest. Yeah, yes. Dean, Dean no, yeah. they remember a kiss, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. Dean Simmons. Dean Simmons, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Gene, Gene Simmons. Let's rock it out! <laughs> I hear they're going on tour with my alchemical romance as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, there's a tour. It's actually uh, well. in this universe. It's not kiss. It's kith, and they're all gith Yankee. Yeah. <laughs> actually. Now kith. kith. Now okay. kith. Okay. Kith. Uh, now that's uh, what I call kith. <laughs> kith and my alchemical romance. We're inventing in so that's many good bands for Rose. So good. Jesus Christ. <laughs> is looking at Kim's notes. Well, I, yeah. I would say yeah. if, if it's not somebody who immediately yeah, springs to mind. Uh, I think then we're, we're, I'm worried. We're, I'm just okay. I'm worried. Okay. No, there's going to be there's someone. Like a very important one that's no. like. I didn't think we so. May, maybe, but then that's that's the case. Well, I mean, I could jump to like the, the meeting. <laughs> like, I feel like anyone who was important was there. I mean, again. Yeah, um, if, yeah, I think so. If, I think if, if we've we're got... stretching to find important people, it's not, not important. It's more <laughs> thinking about if those people that we know have armies at their disposal. Who here has steal. an army? Hands up. You're coming with us. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, in a way, I mean, the Valkyrian Empire is huge, and there will be plenty of soldiers that will be sure. in this fight. Uh, this is more about the people that you trust to get the job done when you need people to act. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you are not going to really be able to command the Valkyrian army to go and do anything. <laughs> like, they're going to be there, like, taking the brunt of the pressure off, so your strike force 
is going to be able to do the things that actually need to be done. And it's why Callus hasn't been able to win. He's not been able to have that force that can come in and do this. Like, he has this vast army, but he just, he's holding the pressure back. He needs a force that's going to actually get stuff done. Um, that's what you're assembling. Will it get stuff done, guys? Yeah. Basically. Finally, we have a team name. I get stuff done, guys. Get stuff done. It's the try guys, but we don't try. GSTG. We get stuff done, guys. Eventually. All right. Um, I mean, well, how about this? How about yeah. this? We'll jump ahead. You can chat with Siaska and Callus about this plan, and then we'll take a break. Sure. And when we come back, if you do think of somebody and you're like, oh, we want to go and speak to this person. Like I'm going on the wiki. Whatever, we can do that. All right. <laughs> I'm just imagining, like, all of us collectively. Oh, we forgot Valor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh, I'll tell you this. Sienska, Callus, and Valor are guaranteed. I just, I just mean there's someone. Yeah. Chauncey. Super obvious. Chauncey! <laughs> Let's recruit. The Spell Clash. The spell Clash. Chauncey. You did already technically recruit the Spell Clash team when you thought you were going to end up fighting Valkyrian. So they are already kind of like involved as an asset, potentially. Oh, uh, see you later, Wolfpack. Chauncey's 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 You're not replacing the wolf pack on the storm chaser, I'll tell you that now. They'll, they'll kill you in your sleep before that happens. Happen one of them anyway. will anyway. Yeah, one of them will eat you. I, I can be um, the but you can, if you would like me to write down spell clash in your war assets, <laughs> I'm yeah, poised to do so. They would die so fast. Would Desire they? the great children! <laughs> I, look, would Hadar... It's like sending actors off to war, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hadar is expecting combat Alas, I die. <laughs> I don't think he's expecting people. Put on a show. Put right, on yeah. a show with flashy spells. A diversion. Yeah, I think he's easily distractible. Oh, Zadar, a couple of fireworks. Um, what about I your mean, sister? Yeah. Oh, she's staying. She's What's staying. Her day is staying. She's got to build some stuff. I don't think we're putting down spell clash fighters. What? As much as I'd love to. Chauncey. What if we come back and the spell clash have like overthrown a rose? <laughs> And like made a I, look, great coalition. I, I think we'll have what if the Ganassi just take over? <laughs> like it's our planet now. One city versus the entire world might Shut struggle. Up. A, a girl bit. dream. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys yeah. yeah. the the Okay. I'll let you guys. I give you time to think. <clears throat> you are having debated this and kind of reached out to your allies. Eventually, uh, a point comes where Valor, kind of on the deck of the Storm Chaser, the purple door <laughs> opens up. Valor and Maximilian come through. Uh, friends, um, mother and father uh, are meeting uh, on the Tassadar. They've asked me to show you the way and take you to see them. They want to discuss this plan, this, this, what they can, tell you what they know. Okay, good, because we've been talking for hours. Um, I, I think we've got a list of people. Good. Uh, who will join us? All right. Should we go and collect them and bring them with us? Is there anybody? Are there any of? Are there any among them that you want to be in part of this discussion? God. Thalia. I can yep. go fetch her Thalia. She's on the Astoria, right? Somewhere. We'll find She'll her. probably be on the Twin Star. Fine. I'm familiar enough with her. I'm pretty sure I can locate her. I think anyone with a commander role would probably benefit from knowing the plan and what's going on. Danica. Danica. Yep. I'll bring um. Protector, mm -hmm. scout. Sure. Hope. Um, oh, Feywild. I can get us there. Great. Um, <laughs> oh, she also has her I own might go fetch, rainbowy I might go portal. fetch Hope. Um, I'll take you all to the Tassel, then I'll go get Hope, because it's, uh, it's a bit more taxing going between planes, but I can do it. OK. Um, uh, b -b 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 Rain, it would be good to bring. Okay, so he knows the plan? Yeah. I mean, Danica, if I go to get Danica, I can bring um, Rain with us as well. There's grand strategist, like if he's going to be part of our command crew. Or... Now, do we remember how he felt about Starbase? Actually, he was swinging on either side. He was side, swinging so either way. I think, yeah. He'll, yeah, he'll be fine. I just don't want to bring someone in there immediately just going to attack Starbase, you know? Can you imagine? I think that anybody who did that would be pretty foolish. Yeah, they yeah, would I die just... immediately. I, you He'd can't, kill them. You can't predict people. <laughs> All right. Well, it sounds like we're inviting most of the people that are on our, our sure. non. Is a Tassadar war already there? List. A Tassadar, so yeah, with, yeah, the meeting's on the Tassadar, so he'll be listening whether, okay. whether we want him to or not. Um, 
All right. Well, let's uh, let's go pick up Thalia and uh, Danica and, and those folks uh, on uh, Horizon and the Astoria, um, and uh, I, we gather everyone else up, and then we'll we'll head in. Uh, and she'll lead you in, uh, and then yeah, you gather up these allies. Um, I've also left five golden tickets around Aroas. Whoever finds them is part of our trusted crew. Oh, <laughs> oh I got no! <laughs> I've been recruited. <laughs> I've been conscripted to die. Um, no. So initially, I think Valor would go and ga- grab uh, Thalia, Danica, Rain, um, on their own, uh, maybe, and the Grand Strategist as well. Uh, and with you guys, go to the Tassadar, and she teleports you straight into, or gates you into uh, a sort of, not quite conference room, but it is this sleek metal table with one of these kind of magical, illusory maps on it, um, with a kind of projection of the, the galaxy, basically. Uh, Callus uh, imperiously stood at the end of the table, decked in... No, it would be decked in his Magitek, the thinner Magitek armor, the closer worn, sort of like lighter suit. Um, he's waiting. He has a few people around him. I don't think anybody you would recognize. Uh, it looks like some of the crew that were on the Tassadar are no longer here. Um, so many of the ones that were... Zarkirian Yeah, versus. the ones that were working with Zarkir are no longer here. But there would be at least one Celestial and one Fiend. Um, probably a Iranis, which is a female devil, um... A warrior Precious. clad in like Throw armor. The Pokeballs now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't, the the Pokeball you don't have anymore. Yes. But you now would be away. the perfect it time is. to power up the storm chaser. Um, I love how in that scene, Nova Harmony, Shansara, died. Now she's a fucking yeah. bullet. <laughs> it hit me on the head at the last minute. I was like, ow. I choose you. <laughs> this will help. Hell. Um, <laughs> no, but yeah, there is a uh, an Iranis, uh, a kind of warrior, uh, devil woman, uh, you know, uh, fully emblazoned in like black plate armor, looking very uh, commander of war. Um, next to her is a celestial man, but he's wearing more like mage robes, and he has a staff, uh, very beautiful, long blonde hair, longer than Lucius's even. It almost goes down all the way to his feet. Um, well, shit. Uh, looking very. Uh, uh, Kale Thalus Sunblessed from uh, WoW, sort of like the you know, yeah, glowing eyes, um, but that kind of skin that's almost porcelain white. Like, it's not like pale, it's white, like alabaster. Um, and you can see that his eyes are actually gold spheres. They're not magical lights, they are pure gold, the eyes, um, and things like that. And just kind of stood there. Uh, we just got another trusted ally. Okay. He's on the team, I love him. Okay. <laughs> um, Stands up. And it's like on his tiptoes a little bit. Yeah, this man is like nine feet tall. <laughs> um, both the the Iranis and the Celestial tower, even over Callus, like they are massive. Um, but they are kind of stood there waiting as well. I mean, you're um, not the only one feeling intimidated. We just came through into this room. It's got like a holographic map of all of uh, like Aroas and all the galaxies. I look back through the portal. There's a scattering of hand drawn maps. <laughs> and you're like little, by me. little room. You've got uh, your stone scrawled list. Yeah. <laughs> People we's likes. People's we's don't likes. <laughs> With the Z, not, yeah. not so, an S. Ayla writes so like many Z's. from Warhammer. Yeah. <laughs> Ayla is biggest. Ayla is best. I imagine it's like when you have a notepad and they've just like written so hard, it's like in the Gone. back. Oh, it's right indented. Through, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've also scratched out so many chunks as well. Yeah. It's, it's not usable. Um, the people that come with you, Danica. Danica seems sort of unfazed and is very, you know, very imperiously sort of like, yeah, whatever. Like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big deal too. Um, <laughs> Rain and the Grand Strategist are a lot more like. Uh, very nervous. They're kind of like looking around. Um, very mm, not subjugated, but just very much in awe and sort of, oh my, that's Kalas Valkyrian, that's Kalas Starbane. We've heard about them, we've never really seen them, kind of thing. Um, eventually, after a little bit of time, uh, Protector and the the. Vala would go and fetch Protector and Scout and bring them through as well. Thalia and the rest of the crew. Thalia, again, very much like Danica, just is like, whatever comes in. Literally, Riker maneuvers onto a chair. Uh, <laughs> That's my girl. And you'd like that. That's uh, my girl. <laughs> uh, just takes a seat immediately. Uh, Kyrie kind of like nervously squawking at the back. Big Cat just stretches out, lays down on the floor, rolls around. It's nice and cool. Um, 
And eventually, uh, <laughs> uh, Valor uh, pops out again, and when she returns, you just hear her like, oh my goodness! <laughs> As Hope uh, returns, immediately it's like, Bernie! Hugs! Uh, even though I'm, I'm um, you see, like, that... Palace kind of raise an eyebrow, like, who is this? <laughs> yeah. I'm glad that even in this room, I'm still a squishy one. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And just immediately, like, uh, is much more careful with her horn this time now that she has her unicorn. Yeah, she's already gouged me. Uh, she's gouged you once. Um, but, yeah, just, like, it's like, oh, what's this? Like, oh, it's very, like, Dee Dee in Dexter's lab. Like, what does this do? Like, pushes a button. <laughs> <laughs> like, that kind of, I'm oh, sorry, I didn't mean to. And uh, just kind of, like, it's very much that kind of vibe. Um, and eventually, probably Thalia is like, hope, just chill. <laughs> like, like st stand here um, we, and sort of we, get to the stand aside. Did we bring anyone from... The storm chaser as well. Through you could do. first. Would you Raya? like to? Yeah. Like Raya Rethra and as well. Yep. Rethra and Vanya. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess just any of the officers of the storm chaser. Uh, maybe Araya, Kamara. Yeah. Out of the out of everybody, it would be Araya, uh, Kamara, um, and either Lookout or Penny. They kind of have the seniori seniority over uh, the others. So. Although I do kind of want to see Howard and Starbane talking. Yeah. If you want, Howard, <laughs> come along. <laughs> I mean, Howard could just, like, slip in through the gate whilst everyone else, he's like, oh, what's going on in here? Is there something? Where's the, where's the door going? He's Where trapped in the He's trapped! He's like, I didn't mean to come in here! <laughs> oh, oh, no, he's panicking again. He's a, a lunch trolley as well. <laughs> yeah, he's, got, like, he's probably got, like, he's got, like, baskets of things he's carrying. Like the like, butler and Tomb Raider. Oh, <laughs> oh we trapped him in the freezer. <laughs> So he just sort of like stands in the corner awkwardly. He probably faces the wall. He's like, I don't want to see nothing. <laughs> just like looking into the corner, like didn't hear nothing. Didn't hear nothing. Um, the there's a murmur of things like that, and Callus would probably, uh, you know, you see him sort of hold a hand up, and he's like, has like things like water and refreshments brought into the room. Um, it's probably brought in by a hulking red-skinned demon in its, like, Valkyrian armor. It kind of, like, bah, bah. <laughs> Emperor. And then plays his hand. <laughs> and it's, like, carrying, like, a number of, like, carafes of drink or whatever in its 12 arms. Oh it just gosh. places them all on the side and, like, hands a bunch of things out. <laughs> it looks down at Howard. What are you looking at? No, then I'm not looking at <laughs> <laughs> And then Hope's just like, hey, don't be mean to him. And, like, he's like, like, and then eventually he kind of gets let out. Um, Charming. Uh, and uh, everyone's kind of gathered, but there's a moment of silence, and then Callus will just say, "You'll wait one more." Okay. Um, who? He just smiles, and then you see. <sighs> would she appear? Almost like a part of the room seems to almost fall, like the sun sets, even though you're inside. It's like a part of the room becomes shadowy and night and you see starlight glitter as that, that amorphous darkness takes a humanoid woman's form and a white dress kind of materializes and then the hair spills out as Siaska emerges into the Oh, room that's well. who, my actual god. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I and have known she wasn't here. <laughs> I mean, when she enters, there is this almost, especially from the Orosians, probably Rain, the grand strategist, Probably um, Kamara would. I don't know if Araya, like they, they, a bunch of them basically like kneel, almost like, you know, like, oh my God, like they're kind of stunned. Yeah. Just her presence is enough to like almost floor them. Um, I don't know how Araya would Araya feel about would, it. Yeah, because she used to worship Zephyr, so. Yeah, okay, so she would like, oh, like almost yeah. like, you know, kneel in sort of like respect and things like that, as the Erosians are all sort of, oh my God, like that's the Aska kind of thing. Um, oh my goddess, literally. Uh, and, uh, she just smiles. Thank you all for coming here. I know the champions have reached out to you. They trust you. And so we have brought you to this council to discuss what must come next. Callus, will you begin? Of course. He stands up, looks around, and there's maybe a couple of frow, you know, furrowed brows looking at Callus Protector, you know, you you sense it, Sentry. Protector's hand immediately goes to the sword, the mm. stiffened back, like... I put hand on Protector's shoulder. Yeah, just like, no action, but just, legs. like, like that, res you know, almost reflective kind of, like, threat kind of yeah. thing. And you see that, like, a few of the others almost, you know, take a breath of fear in. 
and Callus nods. He waves his hand and the map shifts, uh, focusing uh, on uh, a section of, of the galaxy, basically. You see some familiar planes. Those of you Nova, you would probably recognize, you know, Ganas and a few of the planets and things like that, but the rest of you probably wouldn't really be able to understand this map. But Thalia, Nova, and a few others are like looking at it like, mm, okay, yeah. In a few days, once preparations have been completed, the forces of Erois will head into astral space. It will then journey alongside my own forces to the far reaches of our current astral galaxy. Along the way, we will reinforce them with ships from my fleets, many of my forces. We will make our way to this. He twists his hand and the map almost seems to focus in and the magic shifts and blurs and it focuses on a section beyond the maps that you had seen previously, going past Ganas, going past some of these outer planets, to show what looks to be a section of the galaxy of planets that have been ripped apart and strewn about, like Debris, almost like an asteroid field, but on a huge scale, on a, on a colossal galactic scale. Planets that have been broken and ripped apart and scattered like crumbs. This is the Broken Veil. It has been the front line of my battle against Hadar for a thousand years or more. It shifts. It began here, and he gestures. Since I began this fight, it has grown to here. And you can see that it is expanded, and you can see the worlds as this line, this battle line has progressed. The planets get destroyed and broken up and scattered, stretching further and further. The Broken Veil is the front line of the fight against Tadar. It is where we will encounter a vast amount of resistance. But it is not our final destination. Here, he points at a section. This will be our rendezvous point with the rest of my forces, this forward operating base. From here, along with my forces and the forces of Erois, we will punch through to make our way to this place. And he draws the map out. You see, beyond the broken veil, beyond this battle line, there is a single unbroken planet that sits at the edge of astral space. Beyond it is just blankness, the astral void, where no planes and no worlds exist. This is Entropus. Siaska. Entropis is a world that existed before the first divines came through the Genesis world. It existed even before Hadar. It is where the divines battled and weakened Hadar in their first encounter. They built a prison, connecting it to the far realm. It is called Terminus Keep. It can be accessed only at this world. Champions, you are familiar with my daughter's ability to breach the demiplanes of the Titans, my children. It will be a similar situation. It is only here, on Entropis, at the location of what was once Terminus Keep, that can we breach into the far realm itself where Hadar has twisted Terminus Keep to its own ends, and now uses it as a citadel rather than a prison. From this point, the champions, Callus, Vala, and I will go to confront Hadar itself. But reaching it will not be easy. She gestures back to Callus. The Broken Veil represents one of our first threats. Punching through it will not be easy. It will take our combined forces just to be able to survive the onslaught of Hadar's minions. But when we reach Entropis, it will be another matter. Our ships won't be able to get close to the planet. We will need to use uh, smaller vessels to descend to the plane's surface. Your Storm Chaser, I have very similar ships that will 
transport us down. From there, we will need to secure the breach site, the site where Siaska and Valor can actually pierce through into the Far Realm. Nobody has been to Entropis in thousands of years. We do not know what to expect. Once we reach the, the Broken Veil, our knowledge of what to expect evaporates. Not even Siaska has that knowledge. There is perhaps one who may know more. And you'll look at Sentry. You carry the Matrix of the Root Prime, correct, Sentry? I do. Root is even older than Siaska. Root was present at that battle against Hadar on Entropis. It may be that there may be memories or knowledge that Root may have that may aid us in time. It may be something that you, if you have the ability to communicate with them, you should. Okay. But we can't rely on it. As I understand it, Root was defeated in that battle and their body was hurled to the world that became Erois, yes? Yes. It may be that their memories are limited. They may not remember the battle much at all. So we are going into the unknown. This is all we can plan for. If you have questions, <clears throat> if you have suggestions or ideas, now is the time. Uh, Once you... we reach the Broken Veil, we will be committed to this. Once I, once I bring all of my forces to bear, if we do not defeat Hadar, Hadar will overrun the rest of the galaxy. So, um, hi, everyone. Uh, to reach Entropis, the only smaller vessels will work. Does that mean the... Once we get past the Broken Veil, once we are in Entropis's uh, planar orbit. Okay. Um, so even the Astoria would have to be uh, left to fight the main forces rather than... The Astoria would still be able to provide support to those of us on the world itself. It would still uh, be vitally important to doing so. Uh, we will also need to fend off. Hadar will recall forces or send forces out to try and bring weight of numbers against us. We will need every fighter that we have in the air above Entropis to defend us whilst we are there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is there something you had in mind, Kilek? No, it's just wondering where the Astoria would be in that uh, final descent. It will be a, it will be above Entropis, providing what fire support it can, uh, delivering troops where we need them. It is a powerful vessel, but uh, I fear that Entropis... <coughs> Magitek does not work very well on Entropis, because it is so tainted with the Far Realm and Hadar's power. Magitek has a tendency to fail. This is why I have always struggled against Hadar. The very nature of my army's strength is weak against Hadar's power. Erois is different. You have warriors, you have uh, vessels that are not strictly Magitek. This may give us that chance. It will be on your forces once we reach Entropis that we will be most reliant on. I can keep the skies cleared. My forces can defend us as we reach through the Broken Veil, protect us from above. But in Tropitz itself, I feel that your forces will be the greatest use of all. Mm, how modified is the Twin Star now? Mm. It's modified, but, I mean, yeah. It's still Magitek. And, uh, yeah, you know, it's... Magitek will work, but it has a higher risk of failure. It is subjected to entropic magic. It is uh, unreliable. Okay. Do you have any intelligence on Sarkira? Callus. Callus kind of like nods and you see his face like for the first time maybe there's a hint of the anger that you remember from your battle, that rage. And there's a hint of it on his face, like just the name. She will be on Entropis. I'm almost certain of it. She will either lay an ambush for us in the Broken Veil or she will be on Entropis itself. She will not be far from her new master. And you see the Erinis, the, the devil commander next to Callus, is like her, like she's biting into her own lip and like blood is like curling down like her chin. She's like, she will pay for her treachery, Emperor. I will gut her myself if I must. I realize this is probably a sensitive question to ask, but do you know how many forces joined her we do 
She has a significant number of my ships, my troops. She has also acquired many allies on Eroas, cultists, believers, people that she has made deals with. Not enough. I have calculated this in our grand sort of strategy of battle. Her exact forces, ships, vessels, that sort of thing, you do not need to concern yourself with. I would worry more about the sorceress herself. Hmm. Okay. Would she have enough time to develop new simulacrums? Most likely. It's been, what, months since she left? That's plenty of time for her to do that and potentially more, but we also, we do not know what new power she has acquired from Hadar. She may not need simulacrums anymore. She used them as a way to be in multiple places at once to conduct many of her plots without knowing exactly, without the rest of us knowing what she was doing. I fear that she will not need that now. But it is still potentially a threat. We should be prepared for trickery, misdirection, diversions. You know her as well as I. <laughs> I say nothing. <laughs> What 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 kind of forces can we expect from Hadar? Are we talking abominations, mind flayers? What the sort of attacks? Celestial man speaks. We have encountered a number of abominations over the many years that we have been battling against the Hadar, the entropic forces. We break them down into various categories. The creatures that you describe, a mind flayer. There is a similar being. The mind flayers once were a world uh, taken over by Hadar, uh, but rather than being destroyed, he assimilated the creatures. Now they are called Neolithids. Uh, they are similar in nature, but far more deadly and powerful, with far more magical arcane potential. Good. There are also other abominations monstrosities, um, creatures called beholders uh, are common. Uh, there is also the powerful astral dreadnought, a very powerful being that can uh, exist within astral space. We've encountered many of them. There are also the star spawn, or Hadar spawn, we sometimes call them. These are creatures that are empowered with Hadar's entropic magic. Uh, cultists sometimes devote themselves to Hadar. Uh, in exchange, Hadar allows them to live for a brief period of time, as long as they are useful but mainly their, its forces are not thinking sentient creatures. It does not have warships. It has writhing masses of biomatter and magic combined together. Astral dreadnoughts. Oh boy. Oh boy. <laughs> Neo-illithids. Yeah. Yeah, oh I think that's the name of them in the Monster Manual, but yeah. Cool. Intellect devourers. No Behoven problem here. here. <laughs> <laughs> kind of insulting, really, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> mm. But it is likely that we will encounter varied life forms, perhaps ones that we have not even seen. As, as the Emperor mentioned, no one has been to Entropis in thousands of years. We have no idea what awaits us there. Are we certain Entropis even exists anymore? Siaska. Yes. It is a world I was taught of it by my predecessors, the first divines. It was a world much like Aroas, a material plane, we call it, not bound by elemental magics or divine celestial fiendish magics. When the first divines came into being, when they journeyed through the Genesis well into this universe, it was there. But the people, the culture, the civilization that had once resided on it was already long gone. It stood empty. Any living matter, long gone. Just gray stone and steel left behind. A ghost world. It sits at the edge of the astral void looking out onto the vast, empty space of nothing. The Divines were not sure 
if it were the people, if it was the, the beings, the people of Entropis that destroyed themselves, or if it had been a threat from the astral void. So Terminus Keep was built initially as a watchtower, a citadel, to safeguard the rest of the universe from any threats from the astral void. But when Hadar began to consume, destroying other divine sparks, absorbing their power, and they battled against Hadar. They forced Hadar back to Terminus Keep, where a last stand was fought. It was in that last stand, Hadar eventually weakened enough that the first divines, those who survived, were able to trap him, to trap it within Terminus Keep. And then they sealed Terminus Keep away in the far realm, splitting, uh, breaking the space between Owls, our realm and the far realm, sending Terminus Keep into it, locking it in place before sealing it up. So we know it exists. For some reason, it is the one world Hadar has not destroyed. Perhaps knowing that it is somehow tied to his prison or perhaps to his escape, we do not know. It may simply be, for Hadar, it may simply be a joke to keep it there, a taunt trap but it is our only chance we need the we need the breach point without it we cannot access his prison and if we do not defeat Hadar itself he will continue to grow it will continue to grow in strength it will continue to break free of its prison and will eventually consume the universe so mm. is the priority speed in this or strength if you try and get there as quick as we can, or just fight your way through. Callus will say, if only we could do both. Speed will be essential, but we will require overpowering strength to break through the broken veil. You must remember, this is a war front I've been fighting for thousands of years. It will take everything we have just to buy us enough time to reach Entropis. I do not, I am not, I speak plain when I say, if we do not win this battle, there will be no force left to withstand Hadar taking the rest of the universe. It will take every ship, every fighter, every soldier I have that you have to give us that opportunity to reach Entropis. We cannot fail. Uh, the longer we <clears throat> spend on Entropis, potentially facing down Zarkira and Hadar, would that only strengthen Hadar? Once we enter the Broken Veil, not even in Tropis, once we arrive on the edges of the Warfront, that is where planar space begins to overlap with the Far Realm. Hadar's influence has corrupted much of that area, the magic there. The longer we take, once we break through the Broken Veil, it will not be a pleasant experience. I would advise you to conserve your strength as much as possible. If we are forced into battle, do not overextend yourselves. There will be very scant few opportunities for us to rest and regain strength. For you champions in particular, remember, you, Siaska, Vala, and I will be the ones to confront Hadar at the end. It may be possible that Siaska and Vala will be able to restore our strength, but only once and that would be before we enter into the Terminus Keep itself. Keep that in mind. And then what do we know of Hadar himself? He has ways of stopping magic, manipulating time. People. Manipulating people. He consumes. He uses hallucinations and illusions to install fear he can send people to other realms. Am I missing anything out? I believe that you have covered many of his, many of its strengths, Vija. Hadar is capricious, violent, aggressive, but cunning, manipulative. We do not know what to expect on Entropis, but I would be wary if things seem too good to be true. It may be Hadar's work in your mind. 
the power of entropy, Hadar is also capable of eroding, destroying things, leaving no trace. If Hadar or its minions hit you with their magical power, there may not be a body for us to return to life. I know how that feels. Even then, your soul survived, Nefija. With Hadar, I cannot be certain that that will be the case. Well. <clears throat> oh, it's all very dreary, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's Howard looking. How Howard's just like sat on the floor, <laughs> just like eating, shoving short bread into his mouth. It's just like just eating it. Um, what a guy. That's Thalia who I want to be. just kind of like leans back, stretches. Okay. So, fly to the edges of the universe, punch through a war that's been going on for a few thousand years to reach a planet of people that died before the, even the first gods came into being, uh, fight our way to a prison of a planar entity that uh, can destroy matter and control our minds. And uh, if we don't win, everything's fucked. Yeah. Sounds about right? Yeah, no, that's that's it. Um, uh, do you have faith that it'll work? Who are you asking that to? Whoever was just speaking. That was Thalia. Thalia. Do you have faith that it'll work? Fuck no, but it's worth trying. That's my girlfriend. It's better than sitting around doing nothing, waiting for him to come kill us. That's my girlfriend. Right. Tell us that's my girlfriend. Wait, no. A final stand. <laughs> final stand. We can maybe, we can maybe have another 10, 20 years. Take that long for Hadar to wipe out my forces. Now that it knows Siaska is awake, it hungers for her divine spark, the last one left potentially in the universe. It will, it will do anything to acquire it. It will come at us with a strength that we have never seen before. Maybe a decade, maybe two, and eventually it will win. I ask you this. Do we risk it all? Do we potentially doom ourselves to not just death, but an infinite void of destruction? Do we enjoy two decades of life, the people we love, the people we care for? Or do we risk it all now, here, in this moment, for one chance, one final battle? to set this right. Statistically speaking, standing together, all of us here, the unlikeliest of alliances, we have higher odds than if we did it individually or on our own. Statistically speaking, I don't have a decade or two decades in me. Um, so I think I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to join the fight as well. <laughs> Statistically speaking, we're fucked either way, so we may as well just try and now. Hadar is arrogant. It believes itself to be the most powerful being. It believes that all things must end, that it alone will surpass us. Hadar is greedy, full of avarice, has never known courage or love, it has never known friendship, it has never known hope. These will be our weapons in these final days, when none others may work. Seek those, seek those from those here today those around us, for they may be our last defense of all. And with that, we go to a break. Thanks for watching part one. We'll see you in part two. Take care. Yes. Yeah. It's break time, break time for us. Uh, yeah, we're gonna be back in five minutes uh, to carry on with this little episode. I on want top. to kiss her, Dar. Will he see that coming? Oh!
Ooh. You want to show him what love is? Yeah. They're not even switching to you because they're like, no, it's time to end. Right, we'll oh. see you in five. <laughs> Bye.
Man, we're dealing with a we're dealing with a certain type of energy in the studio today, especially from a one Chris Trot. Uh, you can cut to him, Sam. It's fine. Look at him. Look at this man. This man is causing so much trouble <laughs> behind the camera. He killed a man. He's got cat energy. See no evil. Hear no evil. <laughs> they didn't see it. <laughs> They, yeah, that's why I'm telling them, so they can hear about your evil. Lies! Uh, welcome back. <laughs> slander. Uh, slander. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to pretty much just jump straight back into it today. Uh, so here we go. Yes. Hello. Welcome to part two of High Rollers Erois. Last time, our champions have been debating which allies and assets they want to bring with them in their final battle to go face Hadar at the end of the universe. They've also met with Kallus, Siaska, and many of their allies to discuss the exact nature of what is to come, what battles may await them, and what they need to do to prepare. And that is where we pick back up right now. Uh, are there any more questions you have for Kallus or Siaska about this uh, battle or about what is to come, now is a good time to do so. Uh, but also, if there are still thoughts about allies and things that you want to do, if there are any preparations you want to make, uh, this is, I will tell you now, going to be the last time you get Smeek's to plan ghost. things. If you would like to try and resurrect Smeek, you may. Bim's ghost. Oh my god, can we actually we don't resurrect know if, and Bim? We don't know if Bim has a ghost. Together. He might have been happy. He might have gone through to the other side. Beak. I think Bim was very happy. Bouncing off the windshield and every asteroid nearby. It's probably just smashed into a million pieces now. You, well, because you go cold when you go out. Into we space, might see him as we go. Then... <laughs> oh boy! <laughs> just just time to one of the balls back. Epic, take a bim to the face. Epic battle <laughs> into space. And imp. The final hit. <laughs> it was yeah. It was him. <laughs> one point of damage. <laughs> That's all That's we all needed. needed. That's all we needed. In space, is is a body preserved? Yeah. yeah. Or does its own it bacteria. There's no oxygen, so it's it just freezes. Uh, yeah, it's, like a it's a vacuum in it. So. Yeah. It's a vacuum in it. So he so will be no bouncing oxygen. about yeah. there somewhere then. But you're well, all assuming this is that the as well. That, like, space. Yeah. Yeah. Also, Bim was, you know, a little devil fiend thing, so who knows what happens? Maybe oh, they yeah. like, break up into a million pieces. Who knows? You don't know. You don't know shit. I know they well, make you do know. great noise against the windshield, though. Is where you are right now. <laughs> and if you'd like to do anything else, to tell me. So I feel like we've got a pretty good list. The only person I have a question mark by is Scaldi. Like, I just, we... It wasn't necessarily Scaldi specifically, Scaldi's but a group a of healer. clerics and yeah. healers. Uh, general religious people. I mean, Scaldi does not have a group at no. their beck and command. Would there be... The only group that you really know of, like... Clerics and paladins was the grief knight, the knights of Kilara, mm. the knights yeah. of the Black Rose, but yeah, they're all dead. Yeah, they're dead. They're dead. We call upon the priests at Starsur Cathedral that healed Arvel's leg. <laughs> I was going to suggest that the if <laughs> if Siaska has like clerics that worship Siaska, and start like, calling every, like yeah. yeah, there's a bunch of people who all of the gods of Aroes are Siaska's. If you back. want to put together a unit of like. Priests and clerics. Just That's to what I meant to by support, like, just, like yeah. the wider. Yeah, so forces, you can have a war, war asset there. Yeah. It just won't be a war asset that you have any particular connection to. Mm, uh, so yeah, I'll put that down. Yeah, what about? Uh, <laughs> what, what have you called it? Because I'm just thinking Siaska clerics. <laughs> just I'm just going to gonna put down priests of Siaska. For yeah, me. just so that they As can like asset. help help the rest of sure. the people. Yeah. yeah, you can have a unit of priests and clerics. They just won't be one that you have a personal connection to. But, yep, yeah, I'll put that down. About clerics of Hesper. This is going to be, I'm going to assume yeah, that it's going to include a, 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 a number of different clerics and priests from all the different titans and they beliefs of Aroes, yeah. Oh. It all connects to Siaska, but uh, they still worship the other titans. They probably still pay homage to them and stuff like that. More well, like sing some of their like, cover songs and stuff. Uh, yeah, more like they still make prayers and things to those Titans, but it's just it's channeled through Siaska now. Um, but yeah, I've put that down. Yeah, me too, to be honest. I don't remember who Esper is. Our journey. How dare you? This man's just desperate to fill silence. <laughs> Our journey to the Broken Veil. Vale. Is it weeks, months, years, days? You're, you're asking this to Kalas and Siaska. What a weird order. 
It will take. Was... <laughs> if we use, uh, if we use astral travel to slip between the worlds, it will take us a week, perhaps more. Well, we'll need Howard then, and I point at Howard. Oh! Oh no, you missed! The crumbs falling out of his mouth. We'll need provisions for a week. Oh, Howard. it's so dry, my mouth. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. I can get supplies, Mister Captain. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Two weeks for the entirety of the Astoria and the Storm Chaser. You are now head chef. <laughs> I mean, things like, yeah, like supplies and stuff, you don't have to worry about that. Like, that will all be sorted out and provided. Callus's forces can do that. We're not going to sit here and worry I about rations and stuff food. like that. Well, yeah, but, or, yeah. or, or even just like Arvel will make sure the Astoria is fully stopped before it leaves. Mm. Right? It's like, we don't have to, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Nom noms. Not something you have to worry about. You can worry about it if you want your character to be really personally involved in it. Quill's still livid that he can't freeze all of the apple pie, apple crumbles that he's made. I can. can you? Yeah, we got the box. Did we get yeah, the box? Yeah, you killed we the box. Did you get the box, yeah? yeah remember? I was Zarya distracted. made it. You, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, you, you smashed open a elemental. Yeah, yeah, so... And while it's child watched, we harvested it as yeah. well. So, it's in the box now. <laughs> so we will have lots <laughs> of apple, apple pie. <laughs> I don't know how big it was, box. Yeah, how big was the box? It's not a very big yeah, box. Like a trunk, <laughs> yeah. That's quite a lot of apple pie if you put it in, if you stack them. Take if you out. stack them. I mean, like, they're not going to be in plastic packaging, I don't imagine. So You're making you can probably... the craving so crazy right now talking about apple pie. I really would like... <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> I have a need! <laughs> might get one of those ones you can bake in the oven from oh, Tesco on the yeah. way home. Might get one on the mm. way home, I think. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> So, uh, okay. all other brands of apple pies also available. Oh, ice cream or we custard? didn't name ice cream. Okay. Ice cream. <laughs> I'm not no, a no, no, guy. no, 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 no. Salted <clears throat> caramel ice cream with no, 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 no. apple pie. Always just vanilla. Vanilla mm. ice cream with a crumble or a pie or something like that is the mm. wow, the chef's kiss. Caramel and the apple. What about that like Madagascar like, vanilla? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. You get yeah. the good shit. The good yeah. You vanilla. make a hole in the top, then you put the ice cream on top. It, it melts it slightly. Melts yeah. mm. Mm. We'll have none of that if Hadar wins. <laughs> For apple pie! <laughs> For apple pie. <laughs> With Madagascar vanilla Risk ice cream. It all. Oh, I really want that now. <laughs> 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 I sound like the fish eating the carrot. Sorry? Let's just leave what? Rhiannon alone for a minute. For that, yeah. Let's just let Rhiannon sit with that. What? Is there anything else to get it back to the Dungeons and Dragons oh, game yeah, that yeah. we are playing? I think we're going to leave and five years some doing. apple pie. Okay. I mean, sure. it's on topic because the apple pie is going in the little freezer box. Which is going on the ship, yeah. which is going to astral space to fight play, Hadar. Mom. Have some okay. respect. All right, you guys tell me. You guys tell me when you're done. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Tell me when you want to get back to the five-year campaign we've been oh, doing. The okay? cities are leaking. Five years, yeah. man. Uh, it's been a long time. Oh, it's been a long time. No. There's got to be other desserts than apple pie that we can put in. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Sentry, did you learn any other the amount ones? of like oh, desperate crumbles. like let's just, just delay. Yeah. Let's just try and like not wait for the end of the hanging on. Yeah. 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 Sentry, yeah. did you did you did you learn any other things? So you've got the crumble. I learned um red velvet um cupcakes. Yes! Oh. Oh. Should yeah. we freeze yeah. some of those in yes. the box? No, because I'll eat them all. Some of the gold yeah. I gave to Zim Zam's or he used it to eat three cakes whole. Four. Whole. Four whole. Wait, I don't know. I, I was like there. It was th- it was, I, I the was. The point was that he ate them <laughs> whole. And he's real. <laughs> he ate them whole. Yeah, so this, this cake. No real person could eat four cakes in a row. Yeah, yeah. that Come sounds on. ridiculous. Three, but yeah. Four. I mean, it happened. He, he also four. spent the rest on sexy times. But he said four. anyway, you weren't there. You said four initially. I said three. Did no, I not you say? You said four. He said four. If only there was a way to go back in time and find out. Nova, feed you. Okay, you want to bet on this? You want to bet on this? Starbane, can you bring back um, your head (laughs) chef, the big red demon guy? I think we need to... Sentry wants to learn a few recipes. I can't tell if you're actually being serious. Are you actually saying that to Callus in character? Is no one else talking in character? No. <laughs> I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> I, at this point, Tom, I don't know. Tom, you I'm have the stage. To you. <laughs> well, I, I have Please, the stage. Please fulfill this role play with the demon. 
That's right. I don't know if he genuinely was being <laughs> Me serious. Me neither. I want to see how it plays out. Sometimes Trot will say stuff and I'm like, are you being serious? He's like, no, of course not. I'm, I'm like, okay. Hey, 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 I was bud. being serious with Sentry, but not, yeah. You brought us some food earlier. It was quite nice. No, no, no. no. Let's go back because specifically you were like, "Hey, Callus, <laughs> yeah, first name Callus." Yeah, yeah, yeah. First is, name your, is your chef dude around? All like, right, okay. Is that okay. what we're doing? Hey, Stubbs, my boy, my boy, my 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 <laughs> what boy. What did you <laughs> call me? <laughs> hey, Callus Starbane of the Valkyrian Empire. Maybe not Starbane, actually. Maybe it's just Callus Valkyrian. Callus. Um, uh, you, there was a big red um, guy that came in earlier. Everyone is staring at Quill, stammering <laughs> his way through this conversation as Callus is like looking down at him. The giant Iranese demon woman looks like she wants to rip your wings off, uh, and everyone is just staring at you. Mm, 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 mm. See, Sentry wants to learn some recipes, uh, so does Howard to take with us on the journey to Hadar. And um, just one. Uh, could they come back and we could just discuss with them real quick? What was their name? I don't think he introduced himself, but maybe we could. Um... <laughs> can I? Can no, 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 no. Because, because, as this is I don't happening. know how canonical any of this is, right? Well, no, I, that's why I asked. <laughs> and you said yes. You're playing it out. You're, You're playing it out. I said you. I gave you an opportunity to back out, but Mister, I hate silence. Was just like, hey. no, I'm filling this void, Mark. Here we go. You hey, can stops. You can interrupt. Anyway, talk about the hey, fucking Daddy, apple yes? pie you're gonna get from Tesco with your vanilla ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I said, that was part, uh, first of all, that was part of another conversation. Someone <laughs> I was started. continuing that conversation, then it turned into character conversation <laughs> somehow. I, does he no. just like ignore the things yeah. he just says? Yeah. He just filters it out. Yeah. Yeah. The crux of this. He, he yeah. just yeah. makes up his own narrative. That little crane goes really loud. <laughs> like, and hey. hysterical. <laughs> hey, Siaska. Um, I was going to say, as you are doing this and everyone is watching Quill just stammering away at Callus. I'm not stammering. I'm, I'm <laughs> very serious. Sort of like, I need to you know, back. Waffling to Outside Callus. thoughts. <laughs> there is laughter. Like, somebody begins to just laugh. And it's Siaska. And she is just laughing, like, quietly, like... <laughs> And sort of Callus looks at her and then looks back to you. And Jessica says, these are the things that need to matter. And Callus says, I will have Garador <laughs> to discuss the various opportunities of culinary expertise. Thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. All <laughs> the threat I, in that voice. Uh, Garador, wait. Could you come to the meeting chamber? I relinquish the stage. I, can, I, we, I, can we add Garador to the Astoria command team as the quartermaster? He's doing it! He's doing it! <laughs> I don't think we should add that. He's on Starbane's shit. Not anymore, he's not, he's ours now. Eyes. I don't, what, we don't know him! What, what you run down, Mark? Garador, command crew. Pretty good with doors. <laughs> Ayla, you wanted to do something? Oh, I was just gonna pick Quill up and just... <laughs> just like move him back. Move him back. I run into the stage for anyone else. Anyone? I think we're done here. Uh, thank you, everyone, for your time. Um, I assume uh, communication will be sent when uh, Astral Space is our next port of call. Of course, that depends on you, champions. When you are ready, my forces are ready to leave whenever. It is the Astoria and your forces that you need to make sure are prepared. But send the word, and we will meet you. Okay. We'll wait for Garador. Uh... <laughs> Valor will open up a doorway, an archway, and begin to ferry the various companions that you've you know, had here to listen in on this discussion, and begin sort of ferrying them back to the various places they belong. Um, Hope, uh, probably completely unfazed by pretty much everything that's happened, uh, will go up and just uh, sort of like, all the people she doesn't already know, like the Grand Strategist and, and Danica, she's like, lovely to meet you! 
everyone like shaking their hand and like hugs and things like that. She probably goes up to the Iranis and like is like, ah. <laughs> it's like, like shakes her hand and the Iranis is like, what is this creature? <laughs> um, the the celestial like gives her a little gentle pat on the thing. Uh, Hope literally goes to shake Callus's hand. He gently takes her hand and shakes it, um, and then she'll go up to Siaska, and Siaska's just like, you are just delightful, and just sort of wrap Aww. her in a big hug, and then she happily skips, pony style, through a little archway back home, just un- completely unbothered by everything that has happened. Honestly, this being of pure innocence. Vibes. <laughs> See, that's a good reason for taking Hope with us, because we need that. I mean, she's literally called Hope. Yeah, exactly. And you ain't getting that from me. Immaculate in every way. <laughs> uh, until it is just the champions, Callus, Valor, and Siaska, and yeah. Callus' oh. commanders. And then the door opens. What kind of door? Because there's a lot of options with Garador. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a <laughs> crystalline door. The Garador opens. What are you literally. <laughs> He's literally Googled. Well, it's just a place I used to know. What, Garador? Garador's Garador. a company. Is, he's got Garador's. it up on his iPad, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's literally browsing their catalogue right now. I mean, what do you want from me? I, I guess because it's Garage Door, Garador. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I get that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I'm like, what? Would you like Put to see it like that? a demon name out my bum? I don't know. I just, I just relate you to it. You come up with a demon name. <laughs> no, now! <laughs> One demon name right now, go! Uh... Now! That's not so easy. Oh! Not so easy, is it? Coming up with names on the fly. I like... I happen to like Garador. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Just sit there googling about it and giggling away. It's a good-looking catalogue. I'm sure it is. <laughs> this game is sponsored, sponsored by Garador. <laughs> not sponsored. It's not sponsored. This is not a weird ad it's break not an ad. for Garador. We do not endorse them. We don't have a garage. Don't have a need for that. Oh my god. So the door opens. A big red <laughs> demon with six arms, big snarling bestial face. Yes. <laughs> Bill wanted to see you. Well, not me specifically. It was four centuries. Not you, then who? Sen- well, century. Hey. Hello. Uh. Hi. <laughs> Can I help you with something, <laughs> metal woman? Oh. <laughs> it's drool coming out of his mouth. I might mouth, take him off the up. command group. <laughs> oh. I'm putting him down. <laughs> He's in. You. He's doesn't change. Can't, can't put a line through it. I'm we, ready, we, I'm would, ready, isn't it? we would like to um, temporarily acquire your culinary expertise for the voyage ahead. Yes. What do you mean acquire? Or just bo- like borrow, borrow you. You want to take my mind? No, 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 no. Take your, no, 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 no. Just take my s- secrets. No, well, um, not not take them, but if you would be kind enough to share. I only you. share the secrets of my clan with those who are worthy. What would make oh. us worthy? Prove yourself to me. Bye. We beat that guy up, and I'm pointing at Starbane. <laughs> looks at the Emperor. First of all, I don't believe that for a second. He's the Emperor of the Astral Valkyrian Empire. Okay. Second of all, okay. I do not speak about combat. Oh. You must prove yourself in the culinary arts. Oh, he pulls no. out, like, knives and forks and pans. That's a lot of knives and forks and pans. I only know two recipes. Crumble. Then you best Crumble. hope that you can make exceptional versions of those recipes. <laughs> Come to Garador's kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> He stomps his way out. This dude's like 10 feet tall. He's massive. He's oh, got like yeah. huge bulking <laughs> arms and then these like other four pairs of smaller arms. He's found the other guy life. from um, Lilo and Stitch, like the big Yeah, yeah. 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 Like that guy, but bigger and scarier. Uh, do you follow him? Yeah. yeah. He takes you down into the Tassadar, into a, a kitchens, like a, a military style kitchen. Like you see all these angels and devils and humans and elves and all these different races, all parts of the Valkyrian army, kind of just watch you enter following Garador, like, is that some sort of rubber kind of muttering to themselves? Um, and he's like, clear out! <laughs> he gets all, like, the, you know, all the sous chefs. Uh, and you can see he kind of, like, gets one of his arms, he whips a little tea towel over his massive oh, shoulder. Oh, I love that. 
present your dish to me and I will decide if you are worthy. Oh. <laughs> Gladly. Um, I guess I'll just whip up the best damn apple crumble I can make. <laughs> With some Madagascar ice cream. Oh, yeah, it was some Madagascar ice cream. What? What's uh, a, so what's a Madagascar? What's you're going to make cream? a roll. <sighs> Do you have proficiency in cook's utensils? <laughs> no. <laughs> what is have a Howard. What is Century's intelligence? Uh, oh, no. <laughs> worse than my... <laughs> Less than a family Eight. of... Oh, so minus one. Birds. Uh-huh. Is a d20 minus one then, please, Sentry? Well, hang on. I haven't rolled my portents yet. Are you... <laughs> I'm not going to do this shit. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's the total? A nine. A nine. Mm -hmm. You bake as best as you can. Unfamiliar tools. Uh, the ingredients, yeah, surprisingly, you can find the equivalents of most things. Um, you bake an apple crumble pie of some sort, but it is burnt up in places. Uh, it is uh, sort of not the best that you have ever made. Garrett all leans over. <laughs> You have been too heavy-handed with the cinnamon. Ah, oh, that's no such okay, thing. I figure that's where I went wrong. Oh, oh, careful, it's hot. Uh, I am a demon. Oh, true, <laughs> carry on. I fear no flame. Okay. Gets like a big blob of, like, the filling. Mm. Picks it up. Begins examining the pie or the crumble. It's crumble, you mean? It's, yeah. it's crumble. So it's like like examining it, like the dish. Burnt in places. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 Pours the whole thing in his mouth. This is great. I bet you're loving these noises. It's <laughs> <is> my punishment. <laughs> I declare this crumble delicious. More. More? Provide more. Okay, yes, uh, gladly. Teach me this this crumble of apples that you have you have created. Oh, it was quite simple, actually. Deceptively so. <laughs> um, he will sit with you, Garrett, or will learn how to make <laughs> Sentry's version of apple crumble, which is not the best, <laughs> <laughs> and is delighted by this this strange dish of mortals. Mortal I don't, I don't have very good taste buds, you see, so I can't really taste. Uh, Do you have any? I, I, I could, I, Sentry's good with like really strong flavors, mm. so like spice mild. and yeah. yeah, mild stuff. She can't really. You probably get the impression that this demon is of the same ilk, where like <laughs> it has to be very strong flavors, and you have coated this crumble in cinnamon, <laughs> like sugar. It is so like anybody else who ate this, it would be like so like the apples are like tart, but then it's so mm. much sugar and cinnamon. It's like, oh, it's like sour and sweet, but overpoweringly so. Yeah. But this, the demons, and like, you, but you see like other demons and devils, like, what is that? <laughs> they come over, <laughs> there's one that looks like a giant insect. And it's like, what is this? <laughs> this is called a crumble of apples, Zicknar. You must try it. You just pull that name out? Zekna. Yeah, is there a company called Zicknar on there? Uh, I think you call it Zicknar. <laughs> Sure. <laughs> uh, My demon's called Wix. Wix. <laughs> <laughs> um, but eventually, all the demons and devils are like, ah, delicious, more. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and after a few hours, <laughs> you're probably like centuries eventually uh, allowed to leave. <laughs> Thank um, you. It was lovely. It was, <laughs> it was so much fun. I will come to this story uh, and I will share with you these my recipes. Yes, please. Uh, all of Garador's food is incredibly spicy, like, hot food. <laughs> oh, nice. Like, it's, but it's, like, extreme, like, devilishly hot. Yeah. Um, and it's, like, curries and, like, you know, uh, mixed, like, stir-fried dishes and things like that. Um, yeah, lots of curries. Nice. Demons love a curry. Pulled up noodles. Yeah. Mm, hell yeah. You mix it with whatever you want, like, mm. demons tend to have it, like, slathered on, like, big chunks of meat. They don't mm. have it, like, with, like, you know, Carbs. <laughs> it's just meat. It's curried meat and stews. Mm, sounds good. Well, I wonder how Sentry's doing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, about two hours later, Sentry has returned. <sighs> morale officer? Hello. How's morale? Good. I, was, uh, I cooked them my apple crumble and they liked it. And then 
Everybody wanted some, so I was just cooking apple crumbles for hours. I know how Howard feels. <laughs> Bless that man. Well, <laughs> we need to multiply that by the entirety of the Astoria mm -hmm. and the Storm Chasers mm -hmm. to last us two weeks. Sounds good. <laughs> uh, Gar Garador's going to teach me what he knows as well. Right. So we should have lots of interesting different foods to try. Is this conversation happening back on the Storm Chaser? Is this just in the room We're where you're We're still in waiting? that room. Yeah, we've been there for two hours. <laughs> like, Callus has probably left. Like, Callus was like, I have shit to do. <laughs> like, like, do you um, want us to save you some crumble? No. <laughs> and just leaves. Boring. Yeah. Have you ever tried crumble? He's gone. Oh. He's left. Um, Siaska probably is still there, but you get the impression that she's also in many places at once, so he's kind of like just stood there smiling and doesn't say a lot for like a while, and then we'll sort of snap in. Um, and probably with, as Lucius is talking about, like, we need to like multiply that by the amount of people in the Astoria, they're just a kind of faint like, you really should not just eat sugary crumble, my children. You should have other food as well. There's, there's, yeah, there's just like this, this almost un, uh, unconscious mumming that happens yeah, yeah. of like, mm, I'm worried that they're just going to eat crumble for like two weeks. Oh. To be <laughs> fair, we're all gonna die, so hey. Well, yeah, but we don't want to have crumble belly when we fight him. Mm. Oh, yeah, crumble What's crumble before? belly? Real bad. So when we went, when Howard was with us. He gave us crumble, and then we had to fight some oh, stuff. Oh, it was the and best. It, oh my god, Do you remember that? it was so good. Oh. But oh god, my it was. We were really so lethargic. Full. So, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, felt a bit slow. Didn't like it. So maybe not ideal. Or we have crumble belly the day before we fight Hadar. No, mm. the day after. Then crumble it wears belly off. was a nightmare for me. The day after. after, so we win, and then. Crumble Belly. This should be brought up to the Grand Strategist. Mm, <laughs> when to have Crumble Belly. Well, just rationing and apple pie. Mm. There's also, uh, you know, we can abstract the days, you know, leading up to your departure because, you know, there's going to be various people like Arvel and Grand Strategist will make sure that supplies are brought in. You begin mustering all of your assets and your, your allies and things like that. There's also an opportunity here for any last minute you know, upgrades, purchases, spells that you want to cast to prepare mm. yourselves, um, any any research or anything that you basically, this is going to be your last access to really any sort of like resources and, and opportunities to do things before. And I'll tell you this now, out of game, it is going to be non-stop. It is going to yeah. be like, yeah. you, you will be able to rest, but I will tell you this now, every short rest and every long rest will have an ongoing cumulative consequence. Mm, okay. The longer you take when the battles begin, like you should really just try and rest when you have to because like every time you do it, there'll be like a stacking penalty okay. of like bigger consequences. Because it is gonna be a case of like, once you are engaged with Hadar, taking eight hours to have a little sleepy mm. is giving them time to muster their forces, yeah. pressure you, you are potentially <coughs> risking your allies and your forces, you know, suffering huge casualties and things like that. Yeah. So it's gonna be a case of like, anything you wanna do that takes time or anything you wanna do to like get yourselves ready to go, now is the time to do it. In terms of having an item which you put a spell in, yep. to then use without a spell slot in the future. Yeah, like there are there are items that can do that. Ring with a spell slot, like yeah. Jito had. Yep. Yeah. How, how would we acquire, and do you have to attune to such a thing? I will check for you now. Uh, so, uh, your good friend Azaria Perel um, will be able to tell you that such a, an item is, a, is something that she can make. Uh, it does require attunement. Um, right. It can only store up to a fifth level spell at its maximum. Fifth. I would say that maybe I would allow you to make one that could take a higher level spell, but it would be significantly more costly. How much money do we have at the moment? Hmm, we have, at least on my sheet, 21,540. That's about sure. right. Yeah. We should buy some potions, probably. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. Potions are important, but mm -hmm. yeah, I think in terms of if it's going to be relentless on us spellcasters and mm. magic wielders, um, having items where we can store our energies into so that we're not depleted on the days would be beneficial. If we have the spare attunement, 
It's also going to be. It's all, yeah, you can get scrolls yeah, as well. True. You can have scrolls, scrolls mate. The other thing I would say is don't forget that obviously, like, this is probably going to be a situation where using things like lower level spell slots, even if they don't do as much damage or, like, benefits. Also, cantrips. Don't forget, cantrips are at this level are actually very good. They'll probably be better than most of your, like, second and third level spells, or, like, mm. first and second level spells, almost certainly. Yeah, they are. Doing, like, 48 damage and stuff like that. You know, they're pretty powerful. Um, but, yeah. Uh, Ring of Spell Storing, you can get things like that. Potions, uh, again, you're going to be limited by not new stuff can be made very easily. Um, Azaria is going to basically be able to make a couple of things as last minute things like that as well. Um, the Valkyria and Empire can probably supply some things. Um, in terms of potions, I'm not going to make you like buy them necessarily, but I am willing to give you basically one of each, one of the four kinds of potions. So that would get you a regular, greater, superior, and supreme. All right. Cool. Who wants what? I'm going to give you... So I re them because the other ones were broken. Mm. So we have superior and a supreme. Mm. And a regular and a greater. Okay. What's everyone got at the moment? I have none. I have one greater. I have a greater. I have two regular. I so used mine. Lucia. Oh no, I've got a supreme. Oh, oh. Nice. I do you want to take a supreme then? Sure. Squishy boy. Do, would that make sense? Do you think? Yeah. Or should we give it to someone who will you heal the yourself argument? with it? Yes. The, the argument before, when everyone regular regular took all my healing potions, was like, yeah, yeah, just that one more. Yeah. Yes. Give. I think the rest will be a quill is incapacitated, and we need them back. Yes. Yes, I think so. So, I think so. So I've got the little one. You've got a supreme one. for yourself if you don't want to use healing. So we spread the rest amongst... Sentry Nova? Tanky or yeah, dexterous maybe, of us. Because you can heal yourself, can, right? Yeah. So if I could have the supreme... Superior. Superior. Pass those down as you see fit. Okay, and then we've got one greater. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Shan. Um, would you like the greater? I've got supreme. you got a supreme? I've got three regular and can run around. Okay. I will take the greater then. I'll keep that on you for now then. Yeah, yeah, you, you keep that one. I'd say for a Ring of Spell Storing, a uh, fifth level, one that can contain up to fifth level spells, which is the standard Ring of Spell Storing, I'd say would cost you about 4,000 gold. Uh, if you'd like to have Azaria sort of do a powered up version, it would go up to seventh level. Um, but it is a one spell. You can put one. It's not like I'll put a third and a fourth in it. It's one spell slot up to seventh level, basically. And once it's cast, it's in there. Oh, no, hang on. It. No, you can actually, so you can choose how you spend the spell levels in it. So if it's like, yeah, once it's cast, it's gone out the ring. And then somebody has to put it back into the ring. You basically okay. deposit it. As then, part of your daily you, spell yeah. allowance, I think. Yeah, you would basically want to put spells into it before you arrive in your battle, and then you would have those extra spells ready to go. But it works in that, like, so if you have a powered up version, I'd say it maybe costs like 7,000 uh, gold, um, but you can have up to seven levels of spells in it. So you could have like a second level and a fifth level, a fourth level and a third level, um, whatever you And I think it just stays it. there until you use it. It stays well. there until you use yeah. it, yeah. So you could do it like... You can also technically, I would say, with a Ring of Spell Storing, you could ask any of your mage allies, which is Azaria and Tassadar, to put any spell they know into it as well. Oh. So oh. It can even be spells that you guys don't have access to. That's and I, really So I would say you can use any spell in the PHB. <gasps> Time stop. Uh, obviously, it's not unlike... Yeah, it's only a seventh level of spells, so... Magic missile. Hadar hates... Force. I guess isn't resistant to necrotic. No, necrotic no. is their thing. That's starving. Hmm. Either that, or I get a utility spell, a defensive spell that can aid us all, like um, what? mass mm. healing word, or the uh, impenetrable force field spell. What's that called? Wall of force. Something like that, yeah. Globe of Invulnerability. Yeah. That only protects you against magic. Things can teleport inside and out of them. Not and with um, Globe. you can still hit through it. Wall of Force they can. Melee, you can smack 
in yeah. the glue. Glue before so you can hit with melee through it. How does concentration spells work with that? Ring? It works the exact same way. It's basically, the creature casts the spell. Uh, the spell uses a spell slot level of safety C and a spell attack bonus of the, of the original caster. So it would also, like if you have Tassar or Azari do it, it would use their abilities, not um. your own. Um, they're not really much higher than yours, though. Okay. Um, it's I'm otherwise thinking... cast as if you cast the spell. If it is concentration, then the person who can't uses the item would be the one technically concentrating on it. I'm, I'm and before thinking... you think of like, oh, we could give it to Ayla. Technically, if Ayla goes into a rage, she cannot concentrate on spells and things like that. So... It's too angry. Yeah, too angry. Is that what min maxing it too hard? I'm thinking like oh, a, a big nice. max kill wounds or mm. something like that. Oh, mass kill wounds, sorry. Um, uh, so... We've got some time that we can... Yeah. Have a couple of. I'd say you can buy the spell now, and then like you yeah. can just buy the item now, and then you can decide what. For sure. Over the next couple of weeks, you guys right. can pick what spell you want to. So I'll buy the souped up right. one. So seven k for that. Quill, I need seven thousand gold, please. Chest. Here you go. Um, how much is seven thousand? You still haven't learned. Well, I haven't needed to. You've been the quartermaster. Yeah. Not a good one either. Um, 7,000. Okay. Mm -hmm. One, two, three. Oh, Zarya's got all the patience in the world for you to count them out individually. I don't think the audience does, but Zarya does. I have to. Like, sure. It means you have to spend more time with Nigel, though. Yeah. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, nine. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Um, along with buying stuff, yeah, it's like, you know, Quill, if you want to use the eye, or if anybody else wants to use any spells like divination or like anything which is like, I want to commune, I want to do crazy stuff that Mark needs to make up on the spot. Now's the time to do it. Ayla's just going to find a quiet place on Aroes and sit and uh, control weather and just sit in a little storm nice. for a while. Sure. And just... Soak it in. Just soak it in. Nice. Cool. Because she's not going to have a storm in astral space. It's true. So she's just going to spend some time... Yeah. Be the sitting. storm girl. Sitting in the rain Love and it. the wind and the lightning and... Love it. Yeah. Nice. I'm gonna spend some time uh, just fixing up Quill's wing, just giving it some maintenance, giving it some repair. If you'd like to do that, I would say Quill, because uh, I know that currently it requires attunement, right? The mechanical wing. It I can't remember if we removed that. does, yeah. Um, however, uh, I don't know what I could use to replace it. Do we have any... Well, that Magical is... things. I gave mine to Nova. It's also an opportunity to buy some, but I would say that with Nova's new understanding and like more research and being just generally more powerful and having access to the Love Valkyrian Empire, you can make it so it no longer requires attunement. That's pretty cool. Oh, that's pretty huge. Mm. You should get a ring. Mm. That's pretty huge. What, a, a ring with a... a... spell ring. Spell ring? Sling ring. Uh, that, that is it. There's, you can't buy the same item again, I'm afraid. You buy okay. one. Okay, mm. okay. But yeah, I'll um I'll just spend some some time giving some love and some tenderness to that wing and it making it all been, nice and fixing it up and has been squeaking. Yeah, <laughs> making sure I it fits fly. you better. Like yeah. And just the, thank you, the, Nova. The, the squeaking to it, so annoying. Kind of combining Erosian sort of magic and Ethereum with Valkyrian Magitech and all these other kind of bits and pieces. It will yeah make it so it no longer requires attunement. What does this button do? Oh, I don't press that until <laughs> until I need to. Okay. Yeah. Uh, there's a button on the very, very back as well that I can't really reach. Is that for other people? What's uh, that for? That's an emergency release. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Oh, but if one of them hits me in the button... Mm, don't let them hit it. Okay, okay. Protect that. Mm -hmm. Sentry? Yeah? There's a button on the back here. Okay. I need you to stop anyone from hitting that as much as possible. Okay. Because otherwise... Whack, come whack. Off. Yeah. Oh, we don't want that. No. No. Um, All right. Great. Can I, from anyone else? can I also do a really stupid little st stupid thing? Sure. When we're on the Tassadar and Sentry's making crumble. apple crumble, I want to spend some time trying to break into the Valkyrian database and expunging Thalia's record. Hacker man. <laughs> Make two checks for me. Oh, no. <laughs> First one is going to be an Arcana check to see if you can actually like access, like, hacker, hacker man your way into the <laughs> no. magical system. Uh... 17. All right, the second one, I want you to do a stealth check to see how quietly and subtly you manage to do this. Not very. Oh, I have rolled a disadvantage because I've got armor on. Yeah. Does the armor make it dis... <laughs> yes, yeah. It's noisy. Or like uh, your restriction movements. So a 14 and 8, 9, 10, 11. 11. You begin. You find, like, kind of think that nobody's looking. You go up to a console, you start beep, beep, beeping. Uh, 
as you're kind of like trying to access the records, you're trying to kind of like, you know, use this magical sigil system to like break your way into to where this data information is kind of stored. Um, screen begins to sort of flash like this red and oh. amber sigil starts oh going off. And then you just feel a big metallic hand oh no. on your shoulder <laughs> as you are literally doing this outside the room where you're Yeah, I'm not being subtle, but I'm not being very smart about this. You just, what are you doing? Um, <clears throat> do you remember that really beautiful woman who was with me earlier? Thalia Whisperwind. Yeah, she said the F-bomb a lot. Mm. <clears throat> I'm familiar with her. She has been troublesome. Yeah, about that. I was thinking, because, like, you know, she's coming to us with us to the end of the world and, like, fighting technically for you! As well as me, maybe we could, uh, you know, just delete some of that trouble from her official record. Make a persuasion check. Uh, 18. Callus Valkyrian looks down at you. He looks at the screen. An empire is built on war. I will say this. We have greater things to worry about than one troublesome outlaw for now. And should we be successful, and should Miss Whisperwind return with us, I will see to it that we come to an agreement, some sort of compensation for her past misdeeds. She has changed her ways a lot. Be that as it may, there are many individuals who would be displeased if her indiscretions suddenly vanished. Was she that bad? She was a thief, a saboteur. She never killed directly, although many were injured in her escapades. I am a man of law and honor, Nova Vija. I cannot allow a criminal to simply go without some form of restitution. But your hand's right that you could just you could just put your finger right He moves his hand to the close this window screen. <laughs> Bloop. I wish I'd punched him harder. He just kind of like looks at you and smiles. There's a grin on my face when I'm saying it. Like, I'm definitely <laughs> being very cheeky about this. Oh, yeah. And he just, he'll look at you and he kind of smirks. And again, it's that kind of like that little fracture of some of that other personality coming through. He was just like, I would recommend you speak to your friend Ayla if you wish to learn to punch harder. She knows how to throw one. <clears throat> Sorry about Tiangong, by the way. Do not be. Well, I deprived you of a weapon. He holds his hand out. Yeah, all right, come on. <laughs> and you watch as he summons a Magitek spear. Mm -hmm. It changes into like a gun. <laughs> I can technically do like that too, but I choose not to. This is the weapon for me. I have many tools at my arsenal. Tiangong was an ally. Convenient for me to use, but you clearly have a stronger bond. I do, and thank you for being so magnanimous in... I don't know. You are a strange one, Nova Vigia. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. He just walks off. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> I tried! Yeah, you tried, and unfortunately, the the lawful yeah. man is like, no. <laughs> we'll see when we if we survive this. Yeah. Maybe we'll see about like community service instead of prison. <laughs> she ain't doing that. <laughs> no, I know she won't. Uh, anything from anyone else? Any stuff that people want to do? Hey Nova, what are you doing? This apple pie is very cinnamony. Whoops, delete. <laughs> <laughs> There's crumbs on the console, it's Oopsie just deleted it. <laughs> what have you got points? And there's another ring of spell turning. What's that? Mm -hmm. You're just wearing... looking up magic <laughs> items. That's what we're buying, right? Yeah, yeah, I don't mind it. They're going shopping. We have advantage on saving throws against any spells that targets only the person wearing it. Ooh. In addition, okay. if you roll a 20 for the save and the spell is 7th level or lower, the spell has no effect on you. That's awesome. That's And? And instead of targets the caster using the 
slot levels, spell save, DC, attack bonus, and spell casting ability of the cast. Hang on, slow that one down. It basically, it refer, if, if you roll a 20 on a saving throw, uh, and the spell is some third level lower, it bounces the spell back at the person who cast it. Oh, man. If you roll a nat 20. It's like circle of power, but a personal circle of power. It's very cool. It's probably very expensive. Yes. At least like 10. Uh, <laughs> this is a legendary item. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, this is not something one can buy. Or uh, treasure hunt? <laughs> Search the whole of the road. an ancient elemental on a mountain. <laughs> well, um, if not, has anyone else got things? Because I've got one more thing. I mean, if you just, it doesn't have to be an existing item. If you just tell me, I would like a thing that does this, I'll be like, well, maybe I can make that. Or like, maybe I, I can reverse make gravity. It. I don't have any spell, any oh. attunement slots left. Yeah, you're tapped out. Um, I'll stick with my ring of free action. You ready? Yeah, um, I was thinking of communing with Prime, finding out what happened on a oh. shop mm. Not a shopping list. Then. No, just getting all that stuff. Right, getting so if you info. want to do that, that's going to be a big one, so I'll just check if there's any other smaller Other bits. shopping... There's one thing. <laughs> my sword, Captain's Command Sword, Yes. I might go to Idea with that <laughs> mm-hmm. and see if there's any sort of the way she's worked my gauntlet is able to channel my chromatic powers into it is there a way that i could use the sword to infuse it with one of my chromatic spells to deal damage of that type and therefore the ability to dichromancy from it no no that that last bit is where you're pushing <laughs> um i would say that she could certainly make it so that I'll tell you what she could do with this, the, the sword. Is she could make it so that you could spend a charge from the gauntlet to infuse the sword with an elemental damage, but it wouldn't like trigger dichromancy or anything like that. But you could basically be like, I want to infuse the sword with lightning, for example, like acid or cold, um, and use charges from your gauntlet to do that, and then it will deal you know, extra d6 of damage or whatever of that type. There's been uh, a few it'd times be... recently when I've needed to use that sword, so I was thinking of souping it up a little bit. Sure, yeah, if you want to. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'll figure out some price for that, but I'll figure out the details on it. But yeah, she can start working on that. Nice. I'll make a note. Sure. I will also make a note. Uh, Lucius. Sword. Modification. Cool. Right, Tommy Wombus, anything over there? Any um, crazy shenanigans? Just uh, trying to find something to replace the attunement on oh, de wing. Okay. Wing. Well, if you think of something like, I, it doesn't have to be an existing item. It could be like, I want a thing that does this. We can find something. It might not be exactly that thing, but there'll probably be something I can No, do. don't worry, I found it. Stonky's ring. What? What is that? Let's be cast telekinesis at will. Using oh. skitter widgets. What's a skitter widget? This is why I don't generally say look through the PHB because there's a lot of weird stuff from a lot of there weird D&D weird books things. that have nothing to do with Erois. There's a lot of like weird items that are like, mm. I'm from some Magic the Gathering universe. I'm like, cool, doesn't exist. I want Rick's portal gun. Yeah, no. <laughs> what about um, Pickle Rick? Gosh, don't, let's not. <laughs> right, before we get into, I'm gonna do cool RP stuff now with Sentry and Ree. Um, so. You would like to cast Commune. Yes, please. Uh, to, in order to speak with Root Prime. Let me refresh myself on what Commune does. Uh, you can ask up to three questions that are answered with a yes or no, or if they cannot be answered by a yes or no, a short uh, sort of cryptic phrase or something like that. Yeah. Which, But we always say that like you, it's more than just yes and no. It's generally a short sort of answer with an affirmative or a negative connotation. Yeah. So. Where'd you go? Do you find like a quiet place to do this or? Yeah, I guess if we're still on the Astoria, mm-hmm. I'll just go up to maybe the top deck and just sit up there, find somewhere quiet out there and just look out over Aroas. Yeah, well, looking over part of Solvin up yeah. here, it reminds you of the Astoria is this tiny sliver, this fragment of home that still exists. Uh, and maybe the, the sort of top deck is the back of the ship, kind of like an Imperial Star Destroyer. It's built up out of this old cathedral. Cool. Uh, Siaskin Cathedral, and it has a statue, so you're like up there yeah. looking out on this long strip uh, of Solven, now turned into battleship. Uh, the great waves, the great clear, very calm and still ocean of Aroes. And you connect, you close your eyes or depower down your eyes, and you feel your spirit connect with that golden river flowing through you, all the different guardian souls 
hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of different voices. And you find the one you are looking for. Hello, Sentry. Hi, Root. How can I help? We're about to go to Entropis to fight Hadar. And I know your encounter with Hadar was millennia ago, but if you could give me as much information as you can about Entropis, that would be really, well, it would be incredibly helpful. Is there anything you remember? My power within the Matrix is limited. I can ask, I can answer three specifics. If you have specific information you wish to know, I will try and share it. Um. How dangerous is Entropis? You see a vision, sort of the river almost like a storyteller conjuring images to tell a story. Nothing of detail or color, all that same amber fluid, but Root conjures kind of a, a retelling. The battle of Entropis was long, long ago, one that I can scarcely remember now. I was just a young soldier. I was not the true prime when we first journeyed to that place with the Divines to fight Hadar. He had filled it, it had filled its halls, buildings, the empty places, with cultists and minions, creatures of its own devising. Fighting there required great strength and tactics. We had to secure war fronts, places that we could regather our supplies, disable weapons created through foul magics that could attack our ships and the gods in the skies above. Entropis itself has no dangers, no natural ones, but the forces that Hadar brings there are very dangerous. It will be filled with its greatest creatures, its greatest minions, his lieutenants. You should be wary. And is there any way of escape once we enter Entropis? When we battled against Hadar, there were no ships, no vessels that could help us escape. We brought our own transports, old guardian technology, as well as various magical devices created by the gods. There were gods who came aboard ships, much like your storm chaser, chariots of fire and light, but beyond what we brought with us, there was no means of escape, no archways or portals for us to leave. It doesn't have to be about Entropis, just because you started off talking about mm -hmm. that. Like, if you want to ask about Hadar or or anything about Root, it's also you're more than welcome to. And you can cast this again tomorrow, so. Yeah. Um, what's in Terminus Keep? Terminus Keep. It was created to be a watch, a place to be vigilant of unseen dangers from the astral void. I once was a guardsman there. Well, no, would have been, because that was, yeah, no, it would have been. I was once a guard there uh, during my service as a young guardian before I became the prime. Its halls were cold, but not unwelcoming. I and many other guardians and other races enjoyed our time feeling that there was no danger waiting for us. But once Hadar took it over, it became a different place, 
twisted, warped by the mad and chaotic magic that Hadar now wielded. Its walls, its corridors could move, reshape themselves to Hadar's will. Fanged maws, eyes, tentacles, many of the things that you have encountered when fighting the Hadar spawn. These dangers will be present. Okay. That is all the energy I have for now, Sentinel Prime. Thank you, Root. Thank you for trusting me with the Prime. I'll do my best to bring it home. Till all are one. Till all are one. You feel that connection? So. Cool. Nice. Very cool. Yeah, nice. Anything else from anyone else? Um, at a certain point, Lucius will want to speak with the crew of the Storm Chaser, the wolves. Yep. And also speak with Faith in particular. Okay. You can gather everyone up. Power Captain! <laughs> Hello! What's this all about? Ah. Uh, I assume you've been informed of the mission? Yeah, Kamara said we're going to go out into space or something. We're going to fight Big Red Eye. I've had this conversation with you before, right? <laughs> We're going into almost certain doom. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Some will suffer some s real consequences of our actions, of taking such great risks. You mean we'll die? Some may die. Yeah! <laughs> that's a sacrifice I'm willing to make. Sorry. But that's a sacrifice. <laughs> um, but we all, we're all investing in this for the sake of Erois, for the sake of our home and beyond it. This is a very important mission. It's at this point you expect the wolf pack, they're not the brightest soldiers. They are, not, not that they're like, they're just their intelligence. They have a different kind of. They're very cunning, uh, but they, they they sometimes like they don't see the bigger picture of things, and you almost wait for like the inevitable like quip or like joke or something that they're gonna say. The first time, you think you actually have their full attention, and they're looking at you and at each other with a very different look on their face. Serious look. They sort of look around, a couple of them nod at each other. Yeah, yeah. We've all been through a lot together. We wouldn't be where we are without our crew. And we need you to take us on that final journey for Oroes. Snap to attention. For Oroes! Kamara will give you all the details. All right, Put Captain. that gun down. I see you. <laughs> Stand in line. We trust the wolf pack with our lives. Oh! And we wouldn't have a greater crew. They just yell and howl and cheer. And I'll see you all downstairs for some drinkies. Whee! Drink, 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 drink. They just kind of go ahead. Uh, Faith will come up to you afterwards and just be like, that was really good. Yeah, you really, I think they actually listened, which is very rare. I know. Thank you very much. Uh, which reminds me, Faith, um, you won't be joining them. There's a look of, there's a look of disappointment. But there's also that implication of knowing. I kind of had a feeling you would say that. Um, can I be honest? I'm relieved. I'm really scared. I'm not, I'm not like them. I, I'm not a fighter. I, I, I'm not very good at shooting and I'm, 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 I get, I think I would have let everyone down if I'd gone. I, I, I don't want to go. I don't, I don't want to face this Hadar thing. It, it's too scary. I, I just can't. So, and I wouldn't ever put you in that position. I know, I know you would. So uh, as captain, you are relieved of your duty. 
She just kind of hugs, just sort of like nods, sort of like buries a little face in like your shoulder and sort of like wipes her tears a little bit. I have a place for you in Gusthaven. That's that's where you're from, isn't it? That's right. Okay. Anything you need, you can speak with Sky Prince Aridan or my sister, Idea, okay. Ellen Esther. Okay. Anything you need, they will have. Okay. I helped you once. You did. You helped me once. Thank you. Let me do this for you. Thank you. They probably, she points at the wolf pack, they won't get it. They might be mad at you because you're sort of separating me from them. But I'm grateful. I just want you to know that. And I think Kamara will understand, but just, just they might not. It's, it's okay. Uh, we've both been on journeys. Yeah. And I haven't given enough time to check in on you. Lucius, you don't have to worry about it. I mean, everything that happened, I mean, I told you before, I knew that what happened was you were being silly and not thinking things through. But when I explained it to you, you were kind and sweet and you kept your word and it's helped me immensely. You've protected me and that's what I needed. And that's okay. We can still be friends and we can still be there for each other when we need each other. But it doesn't have to be more than anything. Like, that's all it has to be. You don't have to spend... I, I don't feel entitled to your time, is what I'm trying to say. And I don't feel entitled to anything else. I'm grateful for what you've given me. And now I feel like, providing that you win, that I can make a life for my own. And that's worth something. And I hope you get to as well. You always... If, if you can't find any other happiness, anything you need, I'll always be there for. And that's something I need. Thank you. And it's something the wolf pack will need, by the way. I am a grand strategist of my own, and by placing you in Gusthaven and getting them angry at me, they're gonna fight to get back to you. <laughs> well, yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. There's always a silver lining. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for letting me be me. Thanks for helping me get through to the crew. Yeah, don't worry about that. They're just a bunch of idiots anyway. Oh, I know. They're lovable. <laughs> they are. Uh, yeah, with that, she will sort of like nod and go off to basically pack her things. Uh, and yeah, she will depart the ship. Anything from anyone else? Hmm. In that case, no, I was just given the last opportunity. So, a few days go past. Soldiers march onto the Astoria. You see rows of guardians. The first time, maybe century, you've seen them all together. You'd worked with individual units, different teams here and there, but to see the streets of Solven filled with ranks of guardians. Not just as soldiers, but you see the guardians looking around the battleship and you begin to hear, they don't call it the Astoria, they would call it home. You see groups of wild elves traveling from far across Aroas in different colored tartans and colors led by Varnia and Rethra begin to come aboard, make themselves at home as best they can. There's grumbles, there's a few fights, but they eventually settle in. You see priests, some perhaps not quite convinced or perhaps having crises of faith, but gathered together still, 
Scaldi among them, many of the other priests and clerics you've met amongst them, come aboard to begin tending to minor injuries, to set themselves up, to offer prayers and services to those who need them, but preparing themselves for the fight to come. You see that valor and hope together conjure a force of bizarre-looking knights, all of them clad almost like knights from fairy tale books in glimmering armor, some of it gold or silver, some of it pink or white or light blue. Some of them are flowers, literal flowers with swords and bows. Others are satyr or centaurs. Some of them are plant-like nymphs and dryads. Some of them are humanoids and elves. But the resplendent Heartspire Knights uh, join, bringing a mirth and a joy to everyone else, uh, singing songs, filling the Astoria with songs and stories and music and dance as they go, much perhaps to the annoyance of some of the Wild Elves. You also begin to see figures that you don't recognize. At first, they look like civilians. Maybe some of them look like warriors or scholars or mages. As they draw closer, some of them flying, some of them coming via airship, as they gather together, you see that what they truly are. In disguise, they shed off the colorations and skin tones of living humans, and you see luminescent energy beings dressed in clothing that seem to shimmer. You see reflections of swords and maces and bows, staves, as the Eterna here on Erois gather on the Astoria to meet their brethren and sisters in astral space. Danica, Rain, Norfir, Protector, Scout, Thalia, and the crew, as well as the black clad and supported by a plethora of skeletons, Azaria Perel, gather on the Astoria, on its command deck in the old Cathedral of Siaska, looking out on the ship. Along with a grand strategist as well. They wait for you to arrive. The storm chaser docked within the Astoria itself, your own crew preparing it. Danica and Araya, who now takes the place, I believe. Although we hadn't decided that, we can decide that later. But Danica and Araya will sort of take the command deck, look to you all. Champions, I believe it is time to give the word. We would not rob you of this opportunity and honor. Take us into battle. Give the command. Just give us one second, please. Uh, huddle. Yeah, Champions okay. huddle. So, uh, how, how do we do that? That's, that's a lot. That's a lot. Do we, do we have yeah. to say something? Really lot. I don't know what we're going to do. Do we, do we say like statistics? Rise. Uh, well, yeah. I don't really want to rise. Probabilities. Oh, well, clear skies always does uh, well. Clear skies. That's, that's a pretty good yeah. one. Well, uh, what about your oath? You said. You said. You know, it's a bit long, though, isn't it? Yeah, but it was. It was really cool, though. They said the word. We could say that. Oh no. <laughs> okay. At this point, like, Vala maybe, like, pushes her head into the little huddle. Hey, Vala, we're struggling here. Yeah, you guys know that you could probably just say something like Astoria, like, launch, or like, you know, you know. Oh, like, they don't want a like, speech? Well, I don't, I, don't, I think it's just it's like, like a speech it's like a command, go, you know, like. Oh, do they need, like, morale? Like, how's their morale? I think maybe just before the battle, a speech. Maybe. Okay, so oh, this is now just, this is just okay, like, okay, hey, okay, let's okay. go. Okay, okay. To but like, right, they call cool. together then. No, we're, well, we're well, not going to do that. Well, are we? No, it's, it's, no, it's, no, just captain's yours. command, yeah, maybe. You're the just yeah. captain. Type. Captain's you're command. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I take out my sword, which is now, now fully souped up. It's got like a level nine spell in it, thanks to Adea, yeah. and it's got like. Med it looks tech. mostly Blowing. the same as it did before. Yeah. Uh, I hold it aloft mm -hmm. and I conjure the voice of five hundred yards. Crew of the Astoria. Saviors of the universe, ascend into the clear skies. 
the water that's been kind of gathered on the sort of lower That's the best I could do. Oh, I should turn this off. <laughs> <laughs> the Astoria lifts out of the ocean and begins to ascend, rising up into the blue, clear skies of Aroes. It is not the only ship. As you see, joining you from different parts of Aroes, a gold and silver dragon soul ship yes. of the Dragonborn, fully now awoken yes. without the cradle. Yeah, boy. The dragons, and you see that on the Astoria, uh, one of these magical illusion projections kind of flickers to life as you see uh, very, um, almost looking like a kind of like a, like a dynasty, like Chinese kind of general, like with a long beard, like the tall hat, looking like a tactician kind of mm. thing, um, kind of appears, all dressed in gold, uh, kind of very imperiously. Astoria, this is uh, what was the general's name? Fuck! You just threw it at me like that. I forgot to write it down. I wrote it down. I wrote it down. I, wrote it down. I didn't write the commander. General. There was Amadrasus, General Amalaz, and. Samalas. I don't know if Amalas is the command is the sleepy dragon's name. It is now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. I don't. I, it's so buried in my notes. This is General Amalas of the forces of Draconis. We rise with you. And you see uh, the two ships kind of fall into formation with the Astoria yes. as the three powerful ships leave. Eroises. And you see that on the sides, as people are gathered, almost pressed up against the magical field, the guardians, the wild elves, all of these different people are like looking out as the ship rises up. And as the blue turns to that thinner, darker color until it eventually becomes that night sky blue of astral space, the Astoria rises up, arrayed before it. Dozens, hundreds of Valkyrian ships the Tassadar at its core. Callus Valkyrian appears in an image. Good to have you with us, Astoria. Is everything prepared? Is everything prepared? I, I think it is, yeah. I, All I... sections reporting in, clear skies. Oh, he doesn't know the code word, clear skies. He's he has a data years. file on us this thick. <laughs> he knows what it is. He can hear us right now. I can. Don't call him Starbs again. He can hear you. It wasn't canonical as well. Forces of Aroes. Valkyrian Empire. We set sail for Entropis and the Broken Veil. Clear skies. <laughs> and as the ships set forth, that is where we're going to end today's episode. Uh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We yeah, off. Hell yeah. We out of here. We off. Bye, Aroes. Everyone say bye, Aroes. I think bye, we'd, Aroes. we'd all be looking at Aroes. Yeah. yeah. See yeah. the beautiful blue planet, very much like our Earth, but now no longer surrounded by that prismatic, shimmering orb, now seeing it bright, vibrant in everything that is its beauty. It grows smaller and smaller as the Astoria, the forces of Valkyrian, the Draconic ships pull away, heading towards a single red star in the vast, empty blackness of astral space. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Yes! To space. <laughs> yes! <laughs> General Commander Felipixus. We're back, by the way. Yeah, we're back. Sorry, I was writing <laughs> down uh, names that got correct, uh, corrected. Uh, but that's fine. We Already say, been corrected, don't worry. It will all be corrected next week. It's <laughs> fine. Uh, or actually, not next week. What? What? We know he knows. Yeah. So, uh, the way this worked out, we've got a couple of people away, um, but also I'm going to be away. And we thought we were trying to maybe going to try and get another pre recording in, but actually, kind of decided. A week off would probably be a good idea. It gives me a bit more time to prep this last bit. Kind of lets us kind of like get everything together, have a bit of a chill time before we go into what is going to be the final chapter. What do you mean another pre-recording? Are you saying that this... Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> I know it was.
Yeah. They knew it was. Uh, yeah. well, I'm pretty sure that they guessed last week when, 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 when we, me and you were both in Twitch chat whilst <laughs> live on the stream. They didn't know about this one. Well, I think they could guess it. Um, but yeah, no. So we are going to be, this is pre-recorded. Uh, we're going to read out some of the messages from last week. And then when we yes. come back in two weeks' time, we'll read out the messages from this week. Yes. But yeah, there is going to be no high rollers next Sunday. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, but hey. It's a long journey to savor space. It. Mm, yeah. Savor it. Savor the deliciousness. Yeah. Because when we come back, oh boy. A brand new chapter. It's going to get the really final. Well, yeah, I mean, almost like, I don't know if you wanted to start a new chapter, or play this chapter, like this week or next week. I already yeah, had I feel... with okay. Starbane. All right, fine. Sorry, Tom. Oh. Well, um, that's getting separated. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. Uh, yeah, that's, and yeah, we're in, this is, you know, I've said it a couple of times now, but I mean it this time. We're in the end game now. Yeah. 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 We've done yeah. the Titans. Like we're, we're away no. from... Only got Hadar. Heroic yeah. now. Ain't no turning back. No oh, turn. I left my keys. Actually, can we go back? We left now. Yeah. I left the oven on. Yeah. Oh, oh, no, I we're going to get back charger. and Heroic is on fire. I need to get my charger. Yeah. No. Sorry, you're going to have to bite at the airport. <laughs> oh, that's going to be so that? much more <laughs> This guy. Oh, I forgot my very expensive headphones. Got a 12-hour flight. <laughs> Buy some new ones. <laughs> Anyway, uh, hey, thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank you for all your lovely comments last week. I'm sure there's going to be plenty more this week as well. Uh, we hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll be back next week. Tom's going to read out some messages. Yep, this is from the last episode. Exalt Saint with 1,500 bits said... Oh, thank you. Uh, didn't mean to send that just yet. Anyway, beautifully clear skies from Hemel Hempstead this morning. Oh, nice. There you go. Well, thank you very much. Is that where the uh, Martians landed in War of the Worlds? It's not. Coming from Mars. That one, yeah. See you better now. Keep going. Keep going. <laughs> I'm going to remember it. Hilichi, £6.90. Nice. The weed number. I'm sick right now, and all this crying is making me feel terrible, but God damn, it's worth it. <laughs> Thanks for being that. awesome all these past Hope years. I feel better now. We are not responsible for like emotional damage or no. you know, unearthing leaky yeah. ice. Syndrome. Yeah, yeah. It's awesome. not crying. There are tens leaky of ice. Yeah. Yeah. You have leaky eye syndrome. Uh, Gengarism. Oh, yes. Uh, <laughs> That's a cute name. Gengarism uh, says Zim Zam Zambalor is probably my favorite villain. <laughs> Villain. Is he a villain? I'm going to regret ever creating No, villain. you're not. He's great. He's great. He's a good boy. He'll be back. He's, he's good great. when he's used in very small doses. Yeah. yeah. Like that's if he all was he in needs. it too much, you'd all be sick of him. Oh, well, I don't want an entire smart. campaign no, he needs to around Zim Zam. Yeah. A little gem now and again. Every now and then, when you least expect yeah. him. Yes. Yeah. Oh, hang on. The next <laughs> donation no. from Praise Spinach, which has a quarter hundo. We hereby demand a formal vote to make Campaign 3 all about Simzam <laughs> and the rivalry with his sexy, evil witch nemesis. Keep less nope. spoken. Well, okay. Mark, at least give us a one-shot episode. You know what I really want as a prop here is Zimzam's book. Yeah. Just yeah. in the background. Yeah. We could probably... It's got... It. It's really yeah. poorly yeah. animatronics yeah. as well, so the eye winks. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really loud... <laughs> Do you know what you said? When you said what we should get as a prop here, for some reason my mind went like... A puppet, like a Muppet of Zim Zam. Ooh, like, like, full, like, really good detailed one. <laughs> and when I play Zim Zam, I just go on the table. <laughs> and you just have, like, a... Why are you giving the audience this? I don't know why. I just That's in my head when you said that. I was like, yeah, a big puppet of Zim Zam. And you said <laughs> the book. Good. And I went, oh, yeah, that's a good yeah, idea. Everyone yeah. loves Is puppets. it too late to have a puppet version of a Rois where yes. we make all of our characters no. yeah. and puppets? No, it's going to be V2. Or we'll redo the... That's, no, that's campaign six. We, yeah. Yeah, we oh, talked about this yeah, actually, yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. this is actually we filmed this six years ago. Yeah, we're actually yeah. on uh, campaign seven. Yeah, yeah, campaign seven, which mm. is uh, you have to have played the GBA campaign mm. five yep. spin off game Dream yep. Drop Despair subsection five. Otherwise, it's not remake. Make sense. Um, Return yeah. of Zim Zam. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Bay Feather donated 420. That's the sex number. Uh, God, I've been saying that every episode lately <laughs> has been among the best of all of High Rollers, but the role played this episode, last episode, was truly something special. And then there was Zim Zam. <laughs> <laughs> what are you like talking about? Real, I think he's made an impression. It's a real scale with Zim Zam, isn't it? It's he's like people either love him or they don't love him. <laughs> he was, he was, I, I don't know, he was, he was fun last week. He was great. He was needed. Fun. He was very he much was needed. He was needed. Week. It was a needed moment. Yeah. He was um, needed. Also... For last week's episode, thank you for gifted subs from Crispy, Being Wolfie, Exiled Saint, and Courageous Donut. Um, and that is everything. Thank you. Wonderful. If you've donated or, or gifted today, again, we'll 
when we come I'll back, you in two we'll weeks include time. it in two yeah. weeks' time, which will be a live episode. So yes, yeah. uh, we can do all that live. Great, thank you all ever so much. Uh, we love it. Take care. Goodbye. Goodbye. Clear skies. Clear skies. Bye. 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 Bye.